Survival House Network. And now for a taste of things to come. Everybody, welcome to Behind the Mask, episode three. Hell what's, yeah! What's going on? It's your boy River Man and the Lush, and we got a, a special treat for everybody. Who else is with us here? Oh, this is the Red Rocket. Yeah, good old Red Rocket. It's been a while, buddy. How have you been? Uh, lonely. It gets really, really isolated not having you boys to talk to. So that's why I wanted to be here today. Red Rocket's always locked in his in his metal cave. <laughs> Doing this segment, yeah, <laughs> Jer- jerking off to Dave Mustaine. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, it's good to good to have you with us on here, man. I'm happy to be here. Yeah, we th- we thought. What's we... on the what's on the what's on the plate today, boys? Um, well, basically, I think we're going to be doing some, uh, you know, things we watched recently. Um, maybe do uh, some things we're excited about. Some. Uh, you know, some horror news or music news, whatever you want to do, and uh, um, kind of go from there. And then uh, we got a great interview to share with all you guys with uh, Leanne Curtis, which will be coming up too. Hell yeah, and, from and, Girlfriend from Hell, Critters 2, yeah. Rocket Hill High School Forever, 16 Candles. And let me just tell you, this this interview is a lot of fun. Um, <laughs> I'm yeah. looking forward to hearing it because I you know didn't get to be a part of it i'm looking forward to hearing it i heard some things so yeah it should everybody should really get a kick out of it um river man was kind of under the weather that week so uh i apologize i didn't have as great a role in the interview as which i would have liked but uh hey what can you do you know yeah but uh, uh, sometimes the lush gets to gets to be in a loud mouth too and i kind of i kind of just talk out my ass and don't even know it so no nah, i was uh well. <laughs> I was not I was not feeling the greatest that day, so uh, hopefully next oh, interview yeah. will uh, kick ass. So you were you were hungover, weren't you? No, I was actually I was sick for a few oh, weeks you, back okay. then. You were legitimately sick. Yeah. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, sick. And tell me if I start talking like a cyborg yeah, again. Like <laughs> yeah. Because my mic is uh, yeah, you did on, a little bit on the fritz. So from what I can hear, you sound better than you know. I think the best out of the three of us, but yeah. Cool. Um, and yeah, I was going to say too about like uh, the interview. I don't know if it was so much of an interview as it was just like a, a really cool conversation that, that we had with her, you know? Yeah, exactly. I mean, there was like interview aspects to it, you know? I mean, being that, you know, we were asking her questions and stuff like that. But I mean, she was just a really, really cool, easy person to talk to. I think it was just more of a, you know, a good conversation with her, really. It's kind of <laughs> kind of how it was, how it felt for me anyway. Oh, I agree. It felt like we'd known her for years, and uh, um, hopefully, you know, talk to her again here in the future. And uh, definitely, really, really cool girl. So uh, I was really excited and happy with it. And uh, uh, you know, a few technical <laughs> difficulties here and there, but uh, got got a little reverb in there. But um, what can you do, right? I mean, it was our first interview, and uh, I don't know. There's some good things about it, though. So hope you, you know. Like- you know, like you said, it's it's the first interview, which I think is the most exciting aspect of it. I was telling you the other day that, you know, it'll just kind of snowball from here. It'll get easier and easier once you establish yourselves. And, you know, the first interview, you know, you make connections, you make connections. Who knows? Maybe she'll uh, hook us up with Corey Feldman. Does she still, you know, know that dude? Uh, um, no? Yeah. Okay, we'll, we'll hear that in the interview. I haven't uh, – any spoilers? Yeah. I, don't, I don't know. You'll hear about Feldman in the interview a little bit, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Okay, but you know, I just think like I already have somebody in my mind that I'm going to try and reach out to and uh, you know connect with. But I want to wait till we get like another interview, you know, so we can get a little further established. And I'm gonna, I told you, River, I'm going to reach out to a Mr. Lyndon Ashby. I have a man crush. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh yeah. 
do it. Yeah, yeah, reach out. Man. I guess I'm the only one. No, I agree. I agree, man. <laughs> reach out, reach out, whatever. Well, I mean, it's not not like our Scott Bakula, but uh... <laughs> no, yeah, but come, on, we don't want to blow our wad right at the beginning. Yeah, we'll never. No. Blow. <laughs> right, right. Because no. believe me, I will blow my wad. I don't. I think I think we'd be in a con- if we were on like a four way. Even that sounds erotic. If we were in a four way convo with Scott Bakula, a four way, he'd be like, "What's that sound?" Like you're clapping your hands. <laughs> That's right. Nothing, just talking. Only thing I can say about that. <laughs> oh boy. That's right. Oh, exactly. <laughs> and you know we'd have so many questions to ask him. Like all we'd have to do, River, is pretty much uh, kind of turn into question all the things we joked about our entire growing up. Remember how we joke <laughs> about how come there's never the episode where he leaked where he's getting ass raped yeah. or he's getting like you know. A circle jerk on or something, you know. I mean, we could just bring up all these funny things, you know. I don't. I don't remember if uh, was there an episode where he leaped into a woman when he was in bed with a man, or I'm trying I to think, think there was, wasn't there? Yeah, there had I there think, had to have been. Or he was in like the, like the back seat of a car with a dude or something. Yeah, I think I think there was, but I think he was like pushed him off of her, pushed him off of him, and like yeah. Um. So obviously he didn't. Uh, get a cock in his mouth which i would have liked but uh. <laughs> well yeah yeah i know i we we had that you've heard the interview too where he talks about before the show got uh you know scrapped that they were in talks of doing a baby episode where he leaps into a, an infant oh, and, oh that's right you know i don't know he was all ecstatic about it i don't know how that would work so well because a baby's pretty limited in mobility and you know it's like it'd be like a live action episode of rugrats you're locked in the playpen what are you gonna do um, but he had the one episode where he was a chimp, you know, that was probably the furthest they ever took it. Yeah. It's like the movie Baby Geniuses. <laughs> yeah, I've <only laughs> seen that. <laughs> Did that have Christopher Lloyd in it? <laughs> yeah, I think so. I don't we know. We need to reach out to Christopher Lloyd. What's he doing these days? I'm sure he'd do our little show. Oh, I have no clue. One foot in the grave now, doesn't he? Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it sucks, you know, but... He's getting old. Yeah. Speaking of speaking of Christopher Lloyd, I recently purchased uh, the Mister Nanny and Suburban Commando two pack after we uh, kind of had our you know talk yeah. that one time. Oh, and I yeah. watched it a couple days ago, and I'm like, why did Christopher Lloyd got this script handed to him? You know, with Hulk Hogan, The Undertaker, and this horrible story. It's like, yeah, I'm all about it. This was <laughs> this is actually only a handful of years after. You know, Back to the Future was work really that hard to come by for him. He wasn't riding any kind of wave. Oh, he was, he, he was in the Piranha 3D remake too. Yeah, yeah I enjoyed I I enjoyed that. <laughs> After thinking about it, I really didn't like that movie. But I mean, for what it oh, was, for what it was, it yeah. was you know, entertaining. Didn't we watch it together? Actually, yeah, we watched it together. Yeah, yeah, no, I fish and uh, tits and yeah, guts. Oh, come on. Yeah, it was, I mean, it was we, good for what it was, but for yeah. what it was, you know, we sat down, just a couple of dudes, we put Parmesan cheese on our popcorn, and we watched a smut cheesy movie. I mean, it did <laughs> what it was supposed to. It was it was a beautiful evening, I thought. <laughs> it was probably well, it was the night we were coming off watching the Social Network, so uh, you know, yeah, we going from the Social there. Network to Piranha 3D, it kind of you know kind of <laughs> yeah. loses its luster a little bit. But. All right, moving on. Let's. Do you got... Yeah, well, yeah, we got the one thing I want to I want to throw into the show here uh, this time is uh, I want to I want to throw in one of my one of my film noir favorites, um, little uh, little good black and white stuff for you. I want to want to get some something out there for uh, for all you lunkheads and dames. See, uh, <laughs> we'll do uh, yeah, we'll do a little film noir favorite for everybody. It's. Uh, I, I'm a big sucker for that stuff, so I want to throw one in there and talk a little bit about that. Nothing too uh, extensive, but just one for uh, you know anybody that hasn't seen it to uh, to check it out. It's a good one. Well, that sounds great, man. Uh, what else? I got to. I got to be honest. I've been really lazy. I haven't seen any new movies in the last couple of weeks. Um, and as far as music goes. You know, I bought the new Josh Groban hardly. Pff, I haven't heard a new metal album in the last couple weeks, few weeks either. So I'm pretty lazy on that. Backer. Um, what? Backing. <laughs> Dude, I I know, man. I don't. 
I can't be heavy all the time. I'll go into cardiac. Sometimes I want to hear a little light opera, you know? No, I agree. I like Grove and I dig That's his stuff. How, how's his new album? Is it pretty good? You know, I, I just got to listen to it one whole time. Well, you know, do you guys really want to get in too big a depth about Josh Groban on here? No, we can. No. But tell okay, me, tell you want to about... alienate? Do you want to alienate our little bitty you know community that we have established <laughs> already? No, no, but tell me about that Eddie Vedder album. I remember you uh, saying. You okay, yeah, no, okay, yeah. I wanted to talk about the Eddie Vedder album. We had a little bit of gap in episodes, I think, and I I didn't know if I should review an album like that. Because, you know, Pearl Jam isn't even metal. I mean, I love Pearl Jam. And let alone this solo stuff isn't even, like, rock. You know, it's all ukulele jams. And it just kind of all goes together seamless. Yeah, I mean, seamlessly, uh, just totally one thread. All the songs are, like, a minute and a half, two and a half minutes. So one ends, one picks right back up. He's playing the same ukulele. So in that kind of sense, it really follows... Some might think it's monotonous on a first listen, but it really isn't. It's really great. To me, I lay down in bed, and it just feels like Eddie Vedder's right at my bedside <laughs> singing to me intimately. You know, and it's it's really, really good. I really, really enjoy it. Very catchy, very catchy stuff. Nice. And he's a beautiful voice, man. Eddie Vedder is one of those guys, you know, he's lucky because he's, you know, in that baritone or in between baritone and tenor range to where – his voice isn't going to get shot with age. And he smokes like a chimney. I've seen him live. He is smoking nonstop and drinking nonstop. And his voice just gets like, you know, it's, what is it? The black of the berry, the sweet, old of the berry, the sweet of the juice. Yeah, the older yeah. he gets, it's the raspier and it just does his type of style justice. You know, unlike anybody that's like a, a high tenor or an alto, your, your Rob Halfords and yada yadas, you know, that they, they get worse and they lose that. Your Robert Plants, you know, who, yeah. Quoted, yeah. I couldn't sing uh, immigrant song to save my life if I, if you paid, you know, if I I couldn't do it, you know, a lot of those guys they were Bob, Bob Dylan. Well, Bob Dylan, he oh, can't yeah. talk like he used to talk. Yeah. <laughs> he can't mutter like he used to mutter. Like I mean, you know, a lot of those guys, like I was saying, um, Robert Plant was talking about how you know he was he kicks himself. You don't think about when you're in your twenties and you're in your prime, just. You're just doing what you do best, and you're not thinking about, hey, I'm not going to be able to pull this stuff off in 40 years. Nobody thinks about that. But, you know, he's like, you know, I could kick myself for singing in that high of a register and that high of a key where Eddie Vedder's really going to shine because, you know, I've seen him recently, and he's just flawless. He's I've never seen that guy hit a bad note. I've never seen him have an off day, and most, most rock bands have off shows, you know. So props to that guy. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I really dug the uh, like the uh, End of the Wild soundtrack. All oh, the that's my favorite, that, man. That shit was that was good shit. Great movie, it, great soundtrack. It was yeah. phenomenal. Soundtrack's great, you know. And this um, this ukulele songs that's actually what it's called. You know, there's a couple songs on the End of the Wild soundtrack that could have been on ukulele songs, like like Rise. That's all ukulele, you yeah. know, For example, so there's a few tracks that are all ukulele. It's just take those and make a whole album of it. You know, that's all it is. So if you like those songs, you'll probably really like this, even though End of the Wild had a little bit more dynamic, obviously, where, you know. And literally, there's like two songs, maybe it's, yeah, I think it's just two where he's actually got, no, there's two songs where there is a little bit of an addition. Otherwise, it's just him and a ukulele. One song, there's the single, the, uh, crud, what's it called? Oh, uh, Oh, why can't I think of it, man? I'm like it's not the Rise. single they had. No, no, off the new album, man. Oh, the new album, okay. But it, they add a cello, and then on one other song, the chick from Cat Power sings a duet with them, and that's like all you get. The rest of it's just Eddie Vedder and ukulele. But yeah, check it out, man. Seriously, cool. You'd like it. Oh yeah, River. You got any uh, any news at all? Anything you kind of collected? I know you've been busy, and so have I. I don't, I don't really have much. Um, I've been, I'm looking around a little bit today. Um, are we on movies or are we on music? Cause uh, either, either. I mean, as I mean, I keep up to date with music news. Like I said, I haven't listened to a whole lot. Um, river, uh, it was announced yesterday. I think Rex Brown is officially out of down. Oh, Did you really? Hear that? Uh-uh. Yeah. I guess, I mean, they're keep, you know, they won't obviously say what his problems are, but it's, it's been a little bit in the media and it sounds like it's, alcoholism. I mean, I'm not going to sit there and just assume, you know, but he had pancreatitis and 
you know, some bad stuff and he was out of commission for a long time and they've made a lot of comments about him getting his act together if he wants to be in the band and obviously didn't come to that, so I'm thinking he can't drop the lifestyle or whatever, which is coming a lot, coming from Phil Anselmo, you know, guy that's OD'd, you know, from yeah. God knows what. Yeah. But, um, you know, great stuff. But yeah, that's that's what was mine I read today. But Yeah, actually, I was reading something when I got home from work tonight. It was, uh, they're talking about Lionsgate picked up, uh, the movie, the horror film Red State, the new Kevin Smith movie. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, yeah, I heard about that. So I guess they purchased the rights to it, and um, it's going to be coming in multiple platforms, and I think it's going to be coming out in September. So uh, I'll be looking forward to that. Um, I think it's starring John Goodman and uh, Melissa Leo, which I think she was in The Fighter, which yeah. uh, I don't know. It looks like a kick-ass movie. Um, who is who? Who is she in the fighter? Because the fighter's amazing. I don't know a lot of the. She, she was, was the mom, wasn't she? I think so. Was she know. the mom? She was fantastic. Everybody in that movie was great. I thought, but yeah, sorry, that's getting off topic a little bit. <laughs> yeah, no, she was she was the one that didn't she she dropped the f bomb at the Oscars. Yeah, she? yeah, that was her. Yeah, mm-hmm. time, time in history. <laughs> yeah, and I guess the the plot of Red State was uh, three teenagers come across an online personal advertisement for an older woman looking for kinky group sex, but what begins as a fantasy takes a dark turn as they come face to face with a terrifying fundamentalist force with a fatal agenda. So it sounds kind of cool. Oh, yeah. And, uh, of course, Kevin Smith. I love Kevin Smith, so... You know, I I don't think this can be... I mean, this can't... I know his last movie was that cop-out, which I heard awful things about. I didn't see it. But uh, this can't be any worse than the one I saw last. I, it was that Zack and Miri. I thought it was awful. Oh, oh. I love that movie. That was yeah, great. I thought, I thought it was pretty funny. It was hilarious, I, man. To me, I mean, I guess that's where our tastes differ. I, I just... I thought it was just... It crossed a little bit of a line to where it wasn't even funny. It wasn't like toilet hum- humor funny. It was just grotesque and like, this is just sick, you know, to me. Like the I don't poop, know. It just poop on the face part. Like, oh, yeah, great, I mean, man. all of it. It just, it was just too strong and it tried too hard and it was just sick and it was just like, okay, what are they trying to prove? And that, I don't know. It, was, it wasn't, whereas Clerks 2 perfected that, that level, you know, where you got like the donkey show and the ooh cake, you know, they, they did it just yeah. right. <laughs> The the Dutch rudder hit too close to home, didn't it, Red Rocket? <laughs> I, I guess, I guess. Did Brought you have some, some uh, Dutch rudder in your childhood or what? I, you know what? If I have any memories that can be repressed, I don't want you to bring them out during this podcast. So. <laughs> I know. I'm just I don't want to freak you. out and go into a – you know, I've thought about that. You ever think about that? Like, you know, what if – how do I know I wasn't molested as a child? I mean, you have to think really hard, and they'll all come back to me. And then you think and you think, but then you're going to fool yourself like, you know what? I was touched. <laughs> <laughs> Which I don't want. I mean, yeah, that's horrible. We shouldn't even talk about that. Yeah, that's a little If it bad. happened and I don't remember it, I want to keep it that way. <laughs> Maybe that's why I'm abstinent. Maybe it's not really any of the other stuff. Maybe it's because secretly in my psyche I was touched as a child and I am just locking down. <laughs> Nobody's getting in this treasure trove. There's, oh, God. there's something to be said for keeping things buried, I guess, huh? I guess so. I guess so. <laughs> what, do you, what about you, Lush? You, uh, you got any news? or uh... Just one, one, little, one little nugget of information. Uh, there's the... Uh, the Days of the Dead uh, conve- horror convention coming up uh, this Friday, July 1st, going through July 3rd in Indianapolis. Um, I believe it's their first year. And uh looks like they're coming out of the gate with a fucking bang, dude. Like, they got some, uh, looks like they got some great celebrity guests. Uh, they got, let's see, I mean, from Devil's Rejects and, of course, wrestling Diamond Dallas Page. Um, mm-hmm. from uh, El Mariachi and uh, Planet Terror, Car- uh, Carlos Gallardo. Uh, Melissa Cowan's going to be there, who uh, we actually met a while back. We'll talk more about that at, at some point here. But, uh, God, let's see who else. I'm kind of looking is, through some of Is here. Edward Furlong at that show? He actually uh, oh. they canceled last minute. Oh. oh, I was about to say, road trip. Yeah, that's Man. right. Him and uh, Monica Kina from uh, Night of the Demons and Freddy vs. Jason. 
they both uh, called or their you know their people called last minute and and uh, canceled. Didn't give them a reason why, but uh, but yeah, so they're they're not there anymore. But uh, they got see from Devil's Rejects, Ginger Lynn, former porn star, and uh, uh, sorry, she was never mind. Sorry, sorry, she was in oh, the. Uh, she was in the Turn of the Page music video, and that's what I always think yeah, of her as. Sorry. You yeah, was. So. Yep. Sorry, Metallica fan before, you know, porno freak. There you go. <laughs> they got, always on the metal. Sorry. They got Jake, Jake, Gary Busey, both of them. Wow. Uh, Zoe Gary, Bell. Oh, Gary Busey would just be fucking, what a trip to meet him. That oh, be. yeah, man. You know, you know what just Gary Busey looks like to me now? Uh, Have you ever seen, and I, I thought about this, and I, I like that you brought him up. Have you guys ever seen... First of all, people dog this sequel, but I personally really, really, really like Alien Resurrection. But have you guys ever seen it? I haven't, yeah. no. Yeah. Okay, do you know the uh, Ripley-Alien hybrid baby at the end that's kind of like half human, half alien? Right, yeah. That's what Gary Busey looks like now with the sunken <laughs> eyes and the weird nose. That's what he looks like to me. That's great. Like, <laughs> sorry if anybody doesn't know the reference. But. That's awesome. Um uh, yeah, a couple, a couple more. I'll just run through here real quick. A couple more uh, celebrity guests. They got Rowdy Roddy Piper. Uh, wow. Yeah, they got they got the uh, old Rowdy Roddy man. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, let's see, uh, Miko Hughes from uh, the kid from Pet Cemetery. Game. Oh yeah, Gage. Uh, be there. Uh-huh. Heather Langenkamp from <laughs> Elm Street. Uh, uh, Camille Keaton from I Spit on Your Grave. Ooh, that's a good one. And uh, and the new the new uh, toe tag flick, Sella Tersica. She's in that one too. Nice. Um, yeah, I mean, it looks like they got a pretty cool lineup, and I mean, that's you know just part of it. I mean, there's a lot more people. Um, so oh, Patricia yeah, Patricia Tallman. Yeah, did you say her? No, I didn't. Well, I was... From uh, Night Night Living Dead ninety. Normally, don't. Yep, I just I just got to that one actually. I was, yeah. I, Flipping through pictures here, I just got to hers. Ooh, Zoe Bell, from Death Proof. Yeah, Zoe Bell from uh, Death Proof. She's and, a cool uh, chick, yeah. Another one, um, I think uh, Bill Mosley just recently got added. So that would be awesome. That would be yeah. Good. That's that's a that's a good get right there for them. Uh, now I want to play with you. Sorry, I'm still engaged. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, if you're you know in the uh, in the area, or if you feel like making a road trip, uh, yeah, this Friday, July first through the third, go check that uh, convention out. It looks like it's going to be pretty cool. And you know, I just mentioned some of the guests. There's going to be all kinds of other shit going on. I think I did see something where uh, one of the chicks that was in uh, the Human Centipede, yeah, going to be trying to make like the longest human centipede they can with anybody that wants to at the convention. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I call the back. I call I call right behind her. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I call right behind you, Lush. I, I want my mouth all over that. <laughs> yeah. So hey, uh, that's, it, that's about all I got for, you know, news wise. Looks like uh, Mark Price is going to be there from uh, Trick or Treat, uh, Red Rocket. Oh, no. oh yeah, man, dude! I love Trick or Treat. Why don't we? We need to like showcase that movie, and I want to be a part of. I love that movie. It's just, I love it. Eight. I love it. I I introduced you to that movie, didn't I? Not. Yeah, yeah. You showed it to me once. I've seen that one, and I also seen the newer Trick or Treat was also, which was also good, good movie. But uh, mm-hmm. yeah, I have to revisit the the original Trick or Treat. It's it's really good. Oh yeah. Um. You got uh, anything you're uh, anything coming up here, you know, movie wise that you guys are excited about? Um, I don't know. What about you, Red Rock? Anything? Man, I you got to understand. I have had no life this last three weeks. I can't even think properly. Even if there was something I was looking forward to three weeks ago. It's left my 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 brain capacity. I'm doing the P90X diet, boys and girls, and it's yeah. destroying. It is. It's destroying me. I got to work out every day. I'm I'm dieting like crazy. I'm getting no carbs. I just want to eat a big bag of M and M's. So it's like I'm losing. I'm losing memory. So I'm just kind of. I don't know what's coming out. I don't. You'll have to refresh my memory. <laughs> um, there's a couple. I mean, they're not. Uh... 
not major releases, but they're, you know, kind of smaller underground, you know, flicks that I'm actually really, really looking forward to seeing. Um, I think I posted a couple on the Behind the Mask page, a couple trailers for them. One of them is called Bunny Man. Um, it's, uh, it was directed by a guy, I believe his name's Carl Lindbergh. Uh, but it looks really, really cool. Just some, like, crazy fucker in a fucking Easter Bunny costume. <laughs> uh, running around with a chainsaw and all kinds of different shit. <laughs> Wipe this group of people out. It looks fucking great. Uh, so I'm, I'm really looking forward to that. I'm not sure. I'm going to have to do a little more digging as far as, um, like, a release date on that. But, uh, yeah, I'm really looking forward to seeing that. And then this other one. I think it's actually a short film, uh, the more I checked into it, but it's called Roid Rage. And uh, I don't remember if I posted the trailer is for this that. The, is this the Chris Benoit story? <laughs> <laughs> no, this one, uh, it, it looks ridiculous. It's some, uh, some like, kind of parasite thing that uh, it, like, shoots out of this dude's ass or something, I think. <laughs> Just like fucking eats people and stuff. It looks ridiculous. Um, but yeah, if I didn't post that trailer on the Behind the Mask Facebook page, I, I definitely will, so people can check it out because it looks fucking hilarious. Like the uh, the end of the trailer, this dude he's like walking by this hooker, and she's like, "Hey, baby, you like to get your ass eaten out?" And he's like, "You have no idea." <laughs> <laughs> It looks so fucking fun. So those are a, a couple things I'm excited about. And also the uh, the DVD release of Hobo with a Shotgun, which I believe is supposed to be July 5th, right? That's correct. I still haven't yeah. seen that. Have you both seen it? Oh, hell yeah, man. It's great. It's probably four or five times now. It's fucking phenomenal. I, I was creeping um, profiles online, and I saw that you went and saw it at the uh, the Dundee, right? Yes, yes. With our friend Chris Blackshear. Is Chris that, Blackshear, that I... and his, his awesome family came out. Um, and, uh, yeah, they made the drive up from, uh, from KC to come see it. Had you guys met before? No, we never had, we, we had never met before. No, uh, Very just, cool. you know, kind of talked on Facebook a little bit, but yeah, they, they made the drive out here and we all went and checked it out and kind of got to bullshit for a little while after the movie. And yeah, it was cool. It was good to, good to meet them, them guys. Did, did they have business here anyway, or did they come out just to witness your greatness? Came out specifically for Hobo. <laughs> wow, that's cool. Must have not have been playing in their area then. So, anyway, you've seen it that many times; it's that good, huh? So I need to go out and purchase it. Yes, definitely pick definitely it up. Definitely worth a purchase. I'll be don't even don't even that. bother renting it; just just buy it. <laughs> yeah, good deal. Good deal. Rutger oh. Hauer. He needs to get more work. Oh, I know, right? Yeah, the Hitcher man. No. Nope. He was the Hitcher. Let's just yeah. forget that that remake Hitcher ever. Who was that? Sean Bean. Let's just yeah. forget. no yeah. di- no disrespecting him. He's kind of creepy in his own right, but he mm-hmm. didn't he didn't take that character to any extremes. You know, oh, no. it's Rugger Howard all the way. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh yeah. Anything you uh, you're excited about there, River? Um, I've been looking at a few Code Red releases uh, coming up here in July. Of course, the uh, Nightmare Nightmare. To- AKA Nightmare and the Damaged Brain will be coming out. I oh, think yeah. towards the end of July, and then also uh, God's Bloody Acre, which is basically kind of like a backwoods movie. Um, looks like you know a trashy family type of flick, and right. uh, that will be coming out, I believe, July twelfth. So those are a couple movies I have on uh, pre-order, and uh, really looking forward to checking those out. I mean, I've seen Nightmare, but. Uh, I'm looking forward to seeing God's Bloody Acre because it looks uh, looks pretty sweet. So, cool. kind of going out of uh, consciousness because I'm tired. And I at first I thought you said it was a backdoor movie, and I got really excited. Uh, then <laughs> I uh, then I straightened up, and I'm like, he's not talking about what I think he is talking about. That's <laughs> just a joke. I don't want to lay that stuff on way too hard. That's not. Hello, ladies. It's not, it's not called Penal Island. Yeah, your, it's a- inner, <laughs> your inner Heath Ledger was coming out. <laughs> what? Oh, soon. yeah, broke back. Sorry. Oh, too too what? soon. Too soon. <laughs> too, too soon. Too soon. Too soon. It's been like two years, man. 
I made a Chris Benoit joke. That was really not in taste, so that. <laughs> that guy murdered his family. Chris Benoit was a dirtbag anyway, man. Yeah, he was. He it was just well, I mean, I didn't know the guy personally, but yeah, just going off all that stuff, that's just awful. I shouldn't have made that joke, man. He killed his family. That's awful. Yeah, he's a piece of shit. They they did a good job of sweeping that one under the rug. You know, everybody kind of forgot about that. Yeah. Let's just, you know, because I remember when that happened. I know we're totally going out there now because now we're on wrestling. But remember when that happened and at first it didn't come out exactly the details. And it's like, yeah, Monday Night Raw, we're going to – they had a memorial like right away episode. And yeah. then when they found out he roided and killed his family, they're like, ah, never happened, never happened. We're not glorifying this guy. Yeah. It was, And now it was for hilarious. tonight's main event. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I remember, like, the day after, there was a bunch of, like, YouTubers, you know, big Chris Benoit freaks around there crying and shit, and I was just sitting there making fun of their asses because they're all oh, like, even idiots. Oh, even after yeah. he killed his family? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, yeah. while on that topic of wrestling, you know, Macho Man Randy Savage, rest in peace. Yeah. Um, man, he was big part of my youth, man. You know the snap into a Slim Jim commercials. Uh, oh yeah, dig it and all that stuff. I, <laughs> I, if I had more energy, I'd be doing the impression right now. Maybe I'll work it up later. But uh, well, yeah, stay that, away from the Slim Jims now. I guess they yeah. might give you a heart attack. You <laughs> know, I thought I thought a man of his caliber could even survive a car wreck. A car wreck in his size. I guess. I guess no matter how big and roided you are, tree always wins. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I I guess that was kind of not either. That's, you see that's those over. pictures? Uh, those pictures somebody made. They're like animated, but like it's Macho Man. Uh, it's Macho Man elbow dropping Jesus to uh, to like <laughs> stop the rapture. Remember when the rapture was supposed to happen? Oh yeah. And so it was uh, Macho Man <laughs> dropping Jesus and said, "We we can all thank Macho Man for stopping the rapture or something like that." That's right. <laughs> it was great. I did see that man. That's funny. I saw, that is hilarious. I saw another picture. Um, you know, if I would have saw that Macho Man picture, it's one of those things where it's just straight up blasphemy. But you know, you can't help but laugh. You know, and I, I'm serious about that stuff. But I saw another picture somebody sent me, and it was straight up blasphemy. But I couldn't help but think it was funny. It was a picture, and it was like, it was pencil drawn. It was like really detailed, like sketch drawn. It was like one of those. Like an, it looked like um, an old religious painting you'd see in an old woman's house, yeah. and it was a picture of Jesus floating in the sky, I think, <laughs> with arms out, and on the ground was all four Ghostbusters, and they had him with the guns, <laughs> and, and they had the trap on them, <laughs> and it was just like it was it was so wrong, and I felt so bad for thinking it was. I have to send it to you guys sometimes. <laughs> Put it on the Facebook page, man. Yeah. I, I don't want to glorify it that hardcore because it's so wrong, but it's so funny. Get the, yeah, I don't know. Sorry. But Pretty clever. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of, um, while on the topic of law, favorite jackass member is, what, what Ryan, the transition there to what? <laughs> yeah. Okay, we're still talking about Ghostbusters. I'm sorry. <laughs> anyway, oh, Ryan Dunn died. And back on Ghostbusters. Yeah. Um, Anyway, yeah, he died. He was my favorite jackass crew member. I don't know about you guys. He was the one I uh, probably hang out with the most because he seemed the most. I don't know. Bam's a little too gay for me, um, <laughs> and the rest of them. You know, I mean, he just seemed like the most real. Like he wouldn't like slap you in the nuts when you weren't looking. Like if you weren't filming. So, and I get. Did you see the pictures of his car? What was he oh, driving? Like there wasn't even a car left, dude. It was there funny. wasn't even a car oh. left. It was. Yeah. I just. You know, I I didn't get any follow up from it. I guess I heard through a source, and I'm not going to credit it because it was just through the grapevine. But was he drink? Was he driving like really, really, really fast on some windy roads? Yeah, yeah he I heard he's going, going like 130, 120, 130 miles an hour. I think so. So yeah, I, I didn't hear any alcohol, but I just figure if you're going that fast, you got to be drinking. Is that yeah, was that, that all confirmed? Yeah, he was like I think at least two times the legal limit. I think is what they uh, said. That's, that's awful. Who was he? He was he had a passenger, right? He had a yeah. couple. I saw his last tweet or something. He had like some picture of him drinking with a few buddies. Yeah. It was like I think hours before he died, he was getting all hammered and shit. Yeah. So he had one one other guy with him and they yeah, obviously, I mean if you've seen the 
pictures of the wreckage, yeah, they're both dead. <laughs> That's that I've never seen a turnout like that. That car was insane. Oh, dude, that was complete fucking annihilation. <laughs> dude, I couldn't even believe it because the week prior I was watching him and uh, Steve-O on Minute to Win It. I don't know if you yeah. guys ever watched that show. Yeah. They had, like, never... they had like some celebrities, the celebrities for charity or whatever. And yeah, saw him on there and like a week later he's dead. I was like, oh, that's crazy. Yeah, we yeah. Had, just, had just pulled out uh, just kind of randomly like uh, maybe a week or so before he died, we had just pulled out uh, Jackass 3 just for the hell of it, and we were watching that. And then, yeah, like a week later, he's fucking dead. Like, I oh. saw it again. I saw it again because, actually, that week MTV was premiering Jackass 3.5, whatever the DVD is where it's got all the, the bonus stuff that wasn't in theaters. Right. Um, they were running that all week, the week he died. So I saw it a couple times, and it was just it was really weird timing. Yeah, it's crazy. Well, oh, shit. Yeah. Let's let's get off this topic. Yeah. <laughs> Happy, yeah. Bringing everybody down. Is there anything you guys have watched? Lately? Uh, yeah. Actually, uh, there's one flick I wanted to talk about a little bit. Uh, I haven't watched a whole lot lately. I've just been so fucking busy with work and everything else. But uh, it's the movie Stakeland, and uh, I watched this on video on demand like a few weeks back. And uh, yeah, it has. Uh, was that, I'm guessing Nick Dimitri was in it? Nick, yeah, Nick Dimitri, yep. Um, he started it. He was, he was fucking great in this, man. He, uh, it's, it's basically, you know, like the, like an epidemic from, you know, like a vampire epidemic swept across the nation or whatever. And, uh, you know, they're trying to get away from, you know, everything and move, go up to Canada, of course, and find places without vampires. And, uh, I mean, it was shot beautifully. Um, the score was beautiful. The, the characters were awesome. And I would highly, highly recommend this because this is one movie that, uh, I mean, it blew me away after I saw it. And, uh, Lush, I, I don't know if you uh, knew that uh, the main villain in this movie was uh, Eagle Bauer from uh, Rock and Roll High School Forever. Shut up. Yeah, I did. <laughs> really? Yeah, was it Michael Cer- Cervice or Cerveris? That's awesome. Yeah, it's Eagle Bauer, dude. <laughs> That's fucking sweet. I still, <laughs> I've been slacking on Stakeland, man. I still have yet to watch it, but I've heard like nothing but great things about it. And I think our good buddies from uh, Horror Happy Hour posted something on their Facebook page, and I was like, yeah, I'll give it a watch. And uh, yeah, yeah, Danielle Harris is in it. Um, Kelly, Ke- Mc- Kelly McGillis, she's yeah, awesome look- in it. Yeah, I mean, she's uh not not looking as good as her uh, Top Gun days, but <laughs> no. Exactly. Time, time will do that, I guess. Yeah, she could always take my breath away. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> and yeah, it was uh directed by uh Jim Jim Mickle, who also did uh, Mulberry Street that uh, Yeah. Mm-hmm. He was in one of those After Dark Horror Fests, I think maybe the second second year that they did that. Um, which was kind of, uh, Mulberry Street was a cool movie, too. Yeah, um, that, and I think Pride and Glory did that one, too, I'm pretty sure. Okay. The movie with uh, Ed Norton and Colin Farrell. But... Jim Mickle directed that one, too? Yeah, I'm pretty sure he did. Right on, right on. Uh, yeah, I, I definitely got to check that out. I've heard nothing but great things from everybody that's seen it. So I'm, I was jealous when you said you were watching it that night. Yeah, you de- yeah you definitely need to check that shit out because I highly highly recommend this. And I'm not a huge vampire movie goer. I mean, of course I liked um, From Dust Till Dawn and uh, The Lost Boys are probably my two favorite, but uh, this one I f- I have to throw up there with that one because I mean it was everything about it was great. I thought. I mean, the effects look great. The vampires look phenomenal, and just the characters. You just got to love the characters. So, um, yeah, definitely that's give cool. that a watch. I, that's cool, man. I really like, you're not a big vamp. See, I, I'm trying not to get too jaded from the vampire trend with like tween age girls nowadays. Yeah. Cause you know, vampires used to be cool. Um, you know, even Anne Rice vampires were always gay, but you know, they're still, I like interview with the vampire. I mean, some people knock that movie. Oh, I agree. I think it's a good flick. I agree. Oh, good. I, I think it's a good, it is. 
And it's the only movie I think Tom Cruise is good in because, you know, I don't like Tom Cruise because his natural character always oozes through that phony baloney cocky smile in all his characters. Yeah. And it just ruins things. You know what? But it works when you're playing a scummy bloodsucker, you know? It just, wow, Tom Cruise, you make an awesome, nasty... A scummy gay bloodsucker. You know, I don't, I don't know, man. Tom Cruise. Yeah, exactly. Gives me a, yeah, he, Tom Cruise gives me a red rocket, dude. I like Tom Cruise. Uh, I you know what? You know what it makes me. Everybody it's, it, knows Tom Cruise is gay. His fake, okay. his fake teeth piss me off enough. It's that laugh when he opens his mouth and that, just that pompous laugh. You know, we've all seen that video where he gets squirted. That's hilarious, with, uh, dude. Uh, <laughs> that was rude. That was rude. That was rude. <laughs> like, it was just. Why did you do that? <laughs> yeah. But uh, you know that that's that's actually a really good movie. And I, how many of you guys have actually seen the um, the uh, the Let Me In, the American remake of the Let the Right One In? Did See, you guys, I, have I really I didn't have any desire of seeing that one because I love the original. After you saw the original, yeah. But it's really good. It's really good, and I really liked it a lot. It was very, you know. I mean, I guess it's not unique if you consider the original, but I, I guess there's some differences. But um, it's got, you know, I'm not, I can't think of his name, but it's got, uh, what's the dad's name from Step Brothers? You know that guy? And he's also in uh, Burn, Af- Burn After Reading. He's the dude. You guys oh, yeah. know what I'm talking about? Yeah, uh, Richard something. Uh, okay. Let's give the man proper Richard, credit. What's Richard, the- Richard Jenkins. Richard okay, Jenkins. that dude. Okay, I love that guy. He's a great actor and everything. Yeah. You know, he's done comedy. He does drama. He's in this, and he plays sort of, you know, the the guy, the kid. This ugh, the kid is the successor to him. You know, he was like the chick's first, you know, captive, whatever, however you want to call him. But you know, and he sort of passes at the beginning. But he's he's great in it. I think that guy's an awesome actor. It's just. A, Good, good movie. So I like vampires if they're done right. Oh, and uh, um, blah, like Casey Jones, man, is freaking in it too, man. Uh, Casey Jones from Ninja Turtles. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, God, yeah. Elias, Elias he, Cotius or whatever. Elias uh, Cotius. Elias Cotius, yeah. He plays the officer uh, character, and he's – I like him too. He was also – the last thing I saw him in was – I really didn't like it. It was – oh, no, actually it was awful. What's that Haunting in Connecticut movie? Yeah, yeah, he was in that. That was awful. Oh, I, you know, I don't know what you – I didn't, I didn't mind it. I, I love ghost movies, so. I thought, I I thought just, it was okay. I, I almost liked uh, the channel special better. <laughs> yeah, I did. I did too. The, yeah. No, I, I saw that Discovery too and channel I liked or whatever. it. Yeah, I, I just thought it was – I thought it was dreadful. Um yeah, but pff, anyway, last code is there. You guys go, but yeah, let the right let me in is is really really good. So vampires done right. Was that anything? You got anything you watched recently though? Uh, Red Rocket. I'm, I'm serious, man. I don't think. I think I don't get any. T- I haven't had any time to myself. I work so much, and just life, man. I think I started to watch a movie this week. And it was the first, and I didn't even get to finish it because I fell asleep. I started watching Boondock Saints too, and made it about ten minutes, and then I fell asleep. Um, so it's it's been that hard for me to even sit down, let alone finish one. I'll get there though. I swear to God. <laughs> what about you, Lush? Yeah, I, I got a couple. Uh, actually, right, hold hold that thought. I well, you can keep talking. I mean, I'm going to grab a, another brewski real quick. So just keep talking. Cool, cool. Um, I yeah, actually, a couple. Uh, of movies that I watched recently, actually a couple of like the most fucking like, powerful movies that I've seen uh, recently. Actually, one of them, the first one, was called uh, Red, White, and Blue, and uh, it's actually it's streaming on Netflix. And this fucking movie is just phenomenal. Um, really, really. I mean, I mean, my jaw was almost on the floor by the end of this movie. It was, uh, mm. It's it's a hard one to review. Our our friends over Dave and Chris over at Horror Happy Hour. They did a great review of it, and it, it's a hard one to review, um, just because. I mean, because of the plot, it's it's hard to talk about it and not give anything away. Um, but it basically it follows three three characters and their lives kind of intertwine, um, based on a, a series of just really fucked up circumstances. 
and uh, the conclusion of it is just fucking nuts. Um, so I, I'm not going to say much more about it because I don't want to give anything away. But uh, yeah, it's called Red, White, and Blue, streaming on Netflix. Um, I believe it's on DVD now too. Uh, or well, yeah, obviously it is. But uh, <laughs> yeah, check that movie out. Uh, you will not be sorry. It's fucking amazing. Um, the other one uh, was uh, called I Saw the Devil. It's a Korean flick. Mm-hmm. Kind of a, it's probably one of like the better revenge movies that I've probably ever seen. Um, and it's got uh, one of the guys from the movie The Good, The Bad, and The Weird is in it. Um, the guy from uh, Old Boy is in it. Um, it's a really, really fucking well done movie. Uh, I just had a fucking spider crawling on my arm. Sorry there. <laughs> Standing here at the back door with the back door open, having a smoke and a spider just crawl on me. <laughs> God, you're going all cyborg on it. Yeah, it's it's creeping me out, man. Little arachnophobia. Yeah, you're. Riverman's going all cyborg on us again here. Hey, do me a favor, River. Will you say uh, the ship will detonate in ten seconds? The, the ship, ship will ship detonate, detonate in 10, in 10 seconds. seconds. Living, Living tissue, tissue under endometal skeleton. <laughs> I'm a cybernetic <laughs> organism. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, I saw The Devil. Fucking great movie. Uh, I mean, everything about it was fucking awesome. It's a little bit longer. I think the runtime's like two hours and 22 minutes. Um, but it's paced like perfectly, so it doesn't feel too long at any time it doesn't drag and like just some of the shit like i'll just say the cab scene and if you watch the movie you'll know which scene i'm talking about the way that he shot that was fucking brilliant and the scene itself was just fucking brutal um the whole movie i mean there's a lot of brutal shit in the movie but basically it's this uh this guy he's he's going after a serial killer that uh that killed his wife and uh he just he he kind of like he plays cat and mouse with the dude sort of he uh he'll catch him and he'll he'll torture him a little bit but then he'll let him go and he's he's implanted like a tracking device in the guy and he just tracks him wherever he goes and he'll just catch up to him at different points and just keep fucking with him and uh it was a really cool kind of take on a revenge movie and it was probably one of the best like i said one of the better ones that i've ever seen uh so definitely check that out. Also streaming on Netflix, I Saw the Devil. Check that one out, too. Because we haven't implanted it yet. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to tell you. Someone has erased his memory. We're talking about the <laughs> fucking agency here. Shut up! <laughs> You're a tourist, right? How did you know? How did you know? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, a little total recall on, on the brain. I, oh hey, uh, by the way, River just picked up uh, Total Recall on uh, Blu-ray at Walmart. They got a six dollar Blu-ray bin. Oh, do they? Shit, I'll have to, I'll have to go check that out. I need to get that. Blu-rays are Blu-rays are hitting the floor now, man. They're cheap now. They're old news, and now we got ourselves a bin. Yep. Hell yeah, I'm looking forward to that, man. Any Van Dam in there? Oh man, I I can't recall. I didn't. I didn't go dumpster diving too long. I just saw that right on top. I'm like, oh, yeah, you know. I'm still looking to pick up In Hell. Oh, man. $5 bin, dude. Are we Are we going to we gonna hold off our Van Damme convo? Because I could go on for hours about no. my love of Van Damme. Seriously. No, no. We'll, we'll save that for another show. <laughs> okay. In, in Hell in is the shiz, y'all. Check it out. Oh, yeah. It's I, great. I still haven't seen it, but I really want to pick it up. Oh, you never seen it? No, dude. Oh my gosh, that was, I'm sorry, I'm going to say one thing. You know, Van Damme in his post-career, in his post-prime, it's weird because he's only become a better actor. He's, uh, and he started hitting that stride, that curve within Hell. That was the first movie where it's like, wow, he's actually getting okay. And there's this scene, see there, it's it's kind of a, a story that's not super original. Basically, he goes into prison uh, for a crime he didn't commit. He gets framed. We've all heard that. And um, basically, it's a corrupt prison with a corrupt head of the prison. And they're having, like, chicken fights for money with the, with the prisoners. 
it's it's kind of been done in different um, ways in other movies. But the, he he starts losing his mind. He's having to fight and fight, and he gets into this. They lock him into solitary, so he's like all Charlie Mansoned out. He grows his hair out super long, a beard, and then he just loses his mind. And he's losing in this fight against this undefeated big big bad dude, and he just lunges on him and bites at his jugular. It's just like the most gnarly thing in the world. And then he just like lays on the in the dirt floor just screaming with his blood all over his face, just like losing his mind. It's I'm getting hard just talking about it. They're getting, they're getting me hard too, so you better you, stop. You need, a, you, you need to watch it, dude. It's, it's pretty good. Yeah, you know what, Red Rocket, I totally agree with you there, man. I was going to say the exact same thing. I thought his, his acting job in that was like probably one of the best that he's, you know, ever done. Yeah. It, uh, that to me, that's where he hit his curve. That's where I first raised my eyebrow. Like, wow, this is, you know, there's like I said, it, to me, if that movie would have had a huge Hollywood budget, any little kinks in it would have been worked out. You got to look at it as a low budget direct DVD movie and accept it for that, and then right. look look between the lines. It's like this is a this is really a potential great thing going on. And he did a great job, and that's where his curve hit because after that. You know, he had other movies where he just was getting all serious, and he's he's done great. You know, look at JCVD. You know, he got a great job there too. You know, yeah, that was good too. Yeah, very good. You know, you might knock him for it's like, well, he's just kind of playing himself. It's like you know, kind of he's playing a parody of himself. But you know what? If it takes him to act in his native language, just to, to act like stellar, then go for it. Because I mean, I thought it was a brilliant idea. The whole movie was brilliant. You know, I'm not going to knock him for it at all. It's great. Definitely. Yeah, a uh, couple more I'll just make quick mention of that I watched. Uh, actually, last night I watched this abortion called Scourge. Um, it was just a piece of crap. Some, like, creature that, like, lives inside people and jumps from body to body. Um, oh, it's like uh, Jason Goes to Hell or... Uh... <laughs> What's that, what's that movie Fallen with Denzel Washington? Yeah, that was Wasn't more of like a demon spirit, but I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I don't even know why I brought it up. It's Well, yeah, I brought it up just to tell people to pretty much avoid it because it sucked. Okay. Uh, so, yeah, don't watch Scourge. And uh, <laughs> the <Scourged>. other part. <laughs> Scourge. Uh, it also reminds me of Evil Tunes, ta- uh, River. Sorry, Evil Tunes, like with the cartoon demons I, that's, jumping in the that's still, one, that's still one of my favorites, dude. Nice tits. Nice tits. Nice tits. That's so stupid. Yeah, I think I let Blush borrow it, but... uh, (laughs) It's still in your bathroom. Yeah, it's probably as... uh, It's probably (laughs) all sticky on the bottom of the case. (laughs) No, I actually, I gave that back to you. Yeah, I know. You didn't watch it, did you? No, I still hadn't watched it yet. Oh, God. uh, That movie goes back... That harkens back to my... Pre-pubescent days, I watched that on Skinamax and Me too, Blurry. Two Bitcoin. in the morning, dude. And, oh, and, yeah. yeah, two in the morning in my grandma's basement. That's you know, right. I'd close the fence so no sound would travel. Oh yeah, you're and tossing, I was just tossing off to that movie, weren't you? Well, I could, I couldn't toss off back then. That was like, I was like, <laughs> what, SS six, seven? But you know, but I was interested. I'd be like, wow, you remember when it was like Squiggle Vision, and like for a second it might kind of freeze in oh, a spot. Like, I could totally, yeah, I could see it. That, there's an areola. You know, there's <laughs> an areola. It, Good okay. stuff, and you know what, David Carradine. You know, if there, if a movie, oh, Carradine, yeah, yeah, it's like if you don't think a movie is bad enough and low grade enough, throw David Carradine in it, and it'll <laughs> put you right over the brim. It'll meet your quota. Because yeah. uh, I don't know. Other than Kill Bill, that guy's done some stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, he was not a- to mention the stuff he's really done that caught you know during his death. Oh, yeah. Man, dead, dead people today. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. David Carradine, the belt master. One guy murdered his family. <laughs> One guy had an embarrassing scene in the closet. Um, <laughs> the other guy was drinking and driving. That's horrible. You know, and I guess Macho Man, I don't know. He just had heart failure or something. So didn't he? Like, yeah. Had a stroke uh, or something. So heart- you know what? Macho Man gets my award of dignity today because he died with the most dignity. <laughs> yeah. Natural, somewhat natural causes. I mean, who knows? Probably caused the heart failure, but at least he wasn't beaten off with a tie around his neck. What, what? 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 I don't understand. One thing about wrestling is why the majority of horror fans are wrestling fans. Because I look at wrestling, and wrestling is like 
only the, only the biggest losers watch fucking wrestling. Dude, wrestling is for River. Fucking... We both we both have watched wrestling. Back, back, we in, like, when we were, back when I was like thirteen, dude. Man, three years ago we were talking about Raw. We used to watch uh, the no, Nick Carter dude. and Aaron Carter TV show, and it came right after Raw. We love the House of Carter, dude. I Don't watched I watched deny. Raw like maybe like once. It was funny, you know. There was a a nice season there where there was nothing else on, and I'd come home and I would put on Raw, and it just cracked me up how sleazy it's gotten. And it's it just terrible. The, the <laughs> acting is terrible. Just the the you fighters know, are terrible, dude. It's just boring, dude. I don't understand how people like that shit. Fighters, excuse me, wrestlers, oh, wrestlers, wrestlers. Uh, professional Vince, wrestler, professional. It's totally real. McMahon cracks me up though, man. I would love McMahon to. McMahon is the only good thing about WWE <laughs> I, or whatever. I watched this episode where he lost some kind of bet. Like, there was some kind of bet on some match. And basically, if such and such lost the, mat, the match, he agreed to kiss Big Show's ass. Oh, yeah. And, and, and um, dude, the, that guy, I give McMahon props. You know, he might be a scummy, shrewd businessman behind the curtains. You know, it, you got to slit a few throats to be that big of a wig you know but you know what he really he puts himself out there he he works for it because he was on that show he acts and he's part of it he got in there it's scripted he knew he was gonna lose he gets on his knees and then some i don't remember who it was shoves his face into big shows bare asshole <laughs> pulls down his pants and his nose goes in between the cheeks and he is licking he is licking rectum and I'm like man godspeed to that man he earned his millions <laughs> because if that was me I would be making you do it <laughs> yeah I think I was flipping through the channels the other day and I saw I stopped Sorry. on wrestling or whatever and like they had some stupid thing like Jeff Jarrett on there or something he's like you know, if you lose this match, you have to move to Mexico or something like that. Some <laughs> stupid, cheesy thing they have on there. They always have the stupidest things on there. See, I don't understand why people like that shit. I mean... Right. Well, I think I think ever since uh, McMahon caught Ringworm in his mouth, <laughs> they like, like... And they and, yeah, like and my back. wagers on, on what happens if you lose. <laughs> yeah, it's like... <laughs> You're fired! <laughs> Hornswoggle, dude. Hornswoggle. that guy? There's <laughs> <laughs> the dink and doink the clown, dude. It used to be good back in the day, but now it's just fucking stupid, dude. You know what? We were kids, and to be honest with you, it was probably just as stupid back then, man. Yeah, <laughs> but sure we were just was, kids. Dude. Yeah, oh yeah. It's crying out loud, you had Doink, a clown, and a little midget clown named Dink. You just said it yourself. How dumb is that once you really think about it? You know, I don't I don't think I've watched it since the days of like, you know, when Hogan was king and like Junkyard Dog and fucking Hacksaw Jim Duggan and uh, Gold Brut- Dust. Brutus the no, Bar- that's- Cake. Yeah, Brutus Bart. Yeah, Gold Dust is a little after that generation. Um, that's yeah. like the next generation. But yeah, yeah that, me too. Ultimate Warrior. That's when Jake, I watched it. Yeah, Jake, me too. Jake the Snake. Jake the Snake. Yeah. Um, Ra- Ravishing Recruit is my favorite. Yeah, yeah. Razor Cause, Ramon. It's because Ravishing Recruit get all the pussy. <laughs> that's right. He was giving all kinds of mustache rides. <laughs> 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 That was back when they still sported the mustaches. That was like the end of an era. Oh yeah, uh, that like they had those cheesy uh, '80s sta- uh, '80s porn stashes going on. I remember when Ultimate Warrior got written off the show. I you remember Papa Shango, the shaman yeah. wrestler. I saw <laughs> put... I saw that here in Omaha. That uh, that match or whatever. Oh really? Or one of the they... matches with him and Papa Shango. Well, I watched on TV. This is how they wrote him off the show when he left, at least the first time. I don't know if he ever like came back, but he put a hex on him, and I remember him running off the stage and into the bathrooms and started vomiting, and it looked like just mustard pea soup. It looked awful. <laughs> but I don't know. I guess he got like violent diarrhea and piles and dried up and died on the inside. I don't know what happened to him, but they wrote him <laughs> off that way. But they had a lot of character back then. Like, you think about it. You, I mean, it's cheesy, but they had clowns. They had shamans. They had freaking sumo wrestlers. You know, they had the Legion of Doom. Now it's like you got John Cena, the wankster. Like, really? Yeah. That's the character? The wankster? Yeah. And then he's going to turn into Patriot, like, fake Marine wannabe guy? <laughs> I mean, it's – I mean, I'll I'll take uh, Sergeant Slaughter. You know, that's my that's uh, my military guy. We don't need another one. Sergeant Slaughter. <laughs> 
You should shove that nightstick right up your ass. <laughs> uh, I hope. You hope? <laughs> Sick bastard. No, I know. All right, let's get back into top. What were you saying? I said on that note, should we take a break? Yeah, let's. <laughs> we're we're getting kind of into it, and uh, yeah. <laughs> Let's give Red Rocket a few minutes to compose himself. <laughs> Pull the nightstick out of his ass. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, in that... Uh, you are listening to Behind the Mask. We'll see you in a few. Bye. He's been away for eight years. Now he's coming home. Speaking for myself, I'd like to say that the whole experience has made a better man... A better officer and a better American out of me. Thank you very much. But the world has changed. I've been with another man. You don't remember me, do you? And he's changed, too. Pull it up in the air like you're going to take me clear on up to the ceiling. All right. This... Now, higher, man, higher, till you hear the bones starting to crack. That's it. Higher! Come on, higher! Higher! I gotta go now. What do you expect me to do? Just drop everything? <laughs> What is wrong with you? You're driving too slow. It's going to take some time to readjust. Jay! Ah! Shut up! Your husband, he's got a whole bag of silver dollars, and if I don't get him, he's going to die. No, don't! Please don't! I wish you could remember something. A name, a face, an accent, anything. I can't. You can't just let it slide, Major. They don't have any right to live. There's a storm brewing in this man. They took his arm. They took his family and his soul. His anger is building, and it's going to explode. Now, from Paul Schrader, the author of Taxi Driver, comes a new and shattering film about a man poised on the brink of violence. Rolling Thunder, starring William Devane as Charles Rain. He has a purpose. He has a plan. It's only a matter of time. I found them. Who? The men who killed my son. I'll just get my gear. There's the four that came into my home. And there's eight or ten of them. Let's go clean them up. Rolling Thunder. Welcome back to Behind the Mask. What's up, guys? Rush. Welcome back. Yeah, I think next we're going to get into our interview with Leanne Curtis. Very excited to hear this. Yeah, it was very cool. You know, as we said, you know, earlier in the show, man, it was she was a blast to talk to. She gave us just tons of information. Um, really, really good stuff. Really funny, as you're about to hear. So uh, enjoy it, man. It's really, really good. Yeah, and uh, maybe, you know, when you're done with our podcast or the show or whatever, leave us some feedback or what you thought about the interview or whatever, and uh, we'd love to hear it. Yeah, and if you, you know, if you think there's any questions that we should have asked her, um, definitely let us know because, uh, you know, we can get back in touch with her. If there's any questions that you have for her, we can, uh, we can get those to her and see if she can get those back to you. So let us know. Yeah, give it a listen. Enjoy, motherfuckers. Well, you didn't know you're you're gonna do like a, a VH1 behind the music kind of thing. Right? Let's <laughs> VH1 let's start behind the girlfriend. Let's start it. Yeah, let's start at the beginning, Leanne. It's gonna be a long interview. Yeah, forty six years. <laughs> Dorkiness. All right, a long well, moment. Um, but yeah, no, I mean, you're you know your family does you know they go all the way back to vaudeville. Um, so I mean. <laughs> That's what I read anyway. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, was, was acting always something that you wanted to get into your whole life? Or um, when did that come I, I think I think that I kind of, I don't know, it's, it's one of those things where I can't imagine really doing anything else. I kind of tried and failed miserably. I had a job at The Gap. I quit high school because I couldn't handle it. My mom's like, well, if you're going to be out of school, then you have to have a job. I was like, fine, fuck you. I'll go work at The Gap. So I did. And that took about 10 days for me to have my best friend who had a very deep voice call me in sick and pretend to be Dr. Copper. <laughs> my, my patient is very, she can't come back. 
So there was no two weeks notice. There was just, I can't deal. Steve would call them and pretend you're a doctor. <laughs> um, but then I kind of like got an audition for baby. It's you. And then got the job. I mean, I just got lucky. I kind of yeah. got lucky. I can't really right place, right time kind of thing. Yeah. And that's really, this business is so much that, you know, it's so much less like how good an actor are you? That's so secondary. Well, it's, I don't sell yourself short yeah, either. Come on. Right. Well, no, I'm actually probably selling the business short more than selling myself short. Let's see. Who's texting me? Leave me alone. <laughs> oh, God. I've got another orangutan and baby bird comment. Okay, you know what? I'm going to shut the sound off on this because if I don't, I'm going to be totally distracted by... <laughs> by... Bring, bring. Yeah, on, the, on our last show, my, my cell phone went off once and that was it was really professional, I thought. I was like, ah, fuck it, just let it go. I, I put my phone Dude, right up to the microphone. and I'll, I'll raise you 50 birds for your one self. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, what that was your first gig then? The my Navy first gig? Well, yeah, I was on the pilot of Sesame Street, but I don't think I kind of made it on camera. I actually bought, I went out and bought the the DVD that they released of the first season or whatever, and I was looking on the pilot to see, you know, am I there, am I there? Am I, I've got a picture of me sitting on the stairwell with Bob. Yeah. Oh, that's like a child molester to me, but that's it. He um, was Chino. reading a book, and I'm like kind of there in the back, and I saw all the other kids like in the pilot, but I think it had to do with the fact that like at the end of the show, Mr. Hooper, like we went and got balloons, and you know, it was a whole big thing, and then the director started blowing up balloons for everybody, and he blew my balloon up, and he gave it back to me. And I said, could you blow it up a little bigger? He said, no, they don't get any bigger. And I just looked at him. I said, well, you're stupid because my mom blew up the same balloon last night and it was bigger than this. And that was kind of the end of that. Yep, there you go. Now <laughs> you're, you're off the show. Invited yep. back for episode two. <laughs> Everybody I'll knows you don't talk shit to Mr. Hooper. Come on. That's right. Yeah, you know, that's exactly right. <laughs> Mr. Hooper, a hard time. Uh, do- fuck him. Yeah. Who needs him? Pretty much. And then I think my mom tried to take me on a couple commercial auditions and I booked one and it was like for some supermarket and like I was having some kind of, I mean, this is the vague memory and I can only remember the feeling of like being anxious and just, I kept looking back at my real mom and the director was like, no, honey, you need to, with your pretend mom. And I didn't like that. (laughs) So... And she kind of said, you know what, there's none of this, you know, no stage mom. When you can get yourself to the audition, you have fun with that. But until then, mm, we're done. Uh, I thought, okay, well, whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, so then Baby It's You was the very next thing. Aside from some, like, in-studio work, you know, kind of behind the scenes, because my mom did a lot of um, directing of um, foreign films into English. She worked with Ingmar Bergman, and she worked with some really pretty big people. Nice. Um, yeah, and so whenever there was a kid in the movie and they needed a kid to dub, she would, of course, there's the nepotism kicking in. She would hire me, and that's actually how I got my SAG cart. She did this one big-ass cartoon, and there was the role of a doll who sort of comes to life in the cartoon. Nice. Um, and, yeah, she was pretty obnoxious. I want chocolate. No, I want chocolate. <laughs> mm. Right on. So, more typecasting. Typecasting and nepotism. <laughs> they go hand in hand. Sure. I was kind of so, curious. Yeah. I was kind of curious about your role in uh, Married with Children, which is uh, one of my favorite shows. So, <laughs> can you can you sort of talk about that a little bit? <laughs> sure. That was the first job that I got when I came out here in 1987. I showed up, and my friend um, Tammy Billick, who is casting a show called The Protector now, okay. um, yep. which I, I can't Lifetime. remember. The network up. Yeah, Lifetime. Yep. That's it. good. Thank you. Um, I actually just saw her last week. It's kind of really weird to see people when you're 46 that you knew when you were 16 and you just kind of look at each other and go, wow, we're both still here. (laughs) Um, But yeah, I mean, I remember going in and reading for that and I enjoyed it. And, and here's the, the weird twist, which probably has nothing to do with what you want to hear, but the guy who played my boyfriend, the big, tall, spiky haired guy. Yeah. (laughs) My 22-year-old went to high school here in Santa Monica and decided he wanted to take uh, an acting class, like a, you know, yeah. with school. It was one of the electives he took. And I'm looking at this guy, it's Mr. Jensen, Gunther Jensen. I'm thinking, you look so familiar. What is all that about? 
Tyler comes home two weeks after I meet the teacher for like the orientation or whatever. And he's like, so mom, what was it like making out with my teacher? And I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about, Tyler? And he's like, uh, I was bored and I was kind of online at school and I looked up Gunther Jensen and it says married with children and it's the same episode you were in. Dude, mom, <laughs> I think you were kissing. <laughs> oh, nice. Oh, so, wow, seriously? That's oh, great. Wow, so weird. <laughs> Just so weird. But yeah, it was fun. Um, I didn't get to work with Katie Seagal. Um, not until, not until the two years were, like, later. Okay, trying to have sex in a motel room. And, and Marcy and Steve, I guess, were oh, yeah. <laughs> watching the kids through the crazy party. But um, Noah Blake. Noah Blake was one of the friends. He played Christina Applegate's boyfriend oh okay huh. yeah. i think he's the one that, or i was tossing cookies to try to get them in his mouth but that's you know that's robert blake's kid yeah yeah enough, hmm. said, enough said there <laughs> yeah yeah end of that sentence what about ed o'neill did you work with no him? i didn't get to deal with him although he's a really really nice man from everything i've heard um we did he was we were both at icm at the same time so i kind of knew he was at the same agency i was but like there really was no interaction although i have to tell you when i was watching john from cincinnati i think his character was one of my favorites in that with the yeah. books <laughs> yeah. he was, he was great. Get back, it's time to get back in the game with your zeros and your ones oh <laughs> like, talking to me back in the game i know <laughs> Well, you did actually, you did get to work with Katie Seagal years later, though, because you were yes. in Sons of Anarchy, right? Yes, I did. I'm yes, jumping I ahead did. a bit here, but yeah, I just, uh, I'm, yeah. I'm really, uh, like, kind of stream of consciousness here, so. That's okay. That's, <laughs> I work well like that. It's the ADD. I can pick up <laughs> yeah. anything and yeah. skip around and keep track of what we're talking about, sort of. So yeah, were you just was it just one was it just one episode of Sons that you yeah just it one? was just one episode and the sad thing is is um, apparently they were going to write another three episode arc in season two for that whole storyline yeah but the guy who played my husband actually if I guess Cougar Town's canceled now isn't it yeah it's not on anymore but he was playing her ex husband in that so he booked oh, that job oh. and he was unavailable so oh, shit. right they fucking scrapped the whole storyline I'm like dude really. You guys are crazy, because I'm telling you, from what I know about biker world, that chick, if her husband was kicked out, she'd be fucking another one of the bikers, and he'd be paying her bills. Yeah. That's usually how that works. Yeah. Either that, or she's excommunicated, too. Mm-hmm. You know, but... Now, he, was life. he the one that uh, they they burned the tattoo off his back? Yes! That was okay. That's what yes. I thought. Yes! Yeah. No, it was a, didn't they ask him if he wanted a blade or a fire? They yeah, didn't, yeah. Yeah, you they gave him an option. Cut off or burn it off. Cut it off or burn it off. Ugh. Oh, God. The whole then you what? see his back sizzling and uh oh. <laughs> That's, you know what? That's actually pale in comparison to the episode prior. I think episode four or five, whatever it was. The clown gets castrated. Oh, yeah. <laughs> see that one? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Some choice programming here, boy. I need to go back and rewatch the first season. I love the show. It's a great show. Yeah, it is. Um, yeah. And they hate it when you say this, but I likened it to The Sopranos on bikes. Sure. Yeah. I mean, it's it's same. It's organized crime, you know. Hey, so. You know what? Organized anything is organized anything. Doesn't matter if it's the Italians in Brooklyn or the bikers out in, in you know. For sure. The desert or wherever. Yeah, it's the same shit. Pretty much. Yes. And we we in our business launder their money and have been for years, is what I always say, man. Yeah, yeah. I'm business sure. I'm sure. Crooked ever. Ever. <laughs> ever. Well, let's jump back now, back to the eighties. Oh god. Um, <laughs> so I need to get my hair ready for that. <laughs> yeah, get the hair get the hairspray out. <laughs> um no, you actually you were in uh sixteen candles. Randy? Randy. Randy. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, what was, uh, I mean, working with John Hughes, you know? John was awesome. John was like a big kid. John hung out with us. I'm amazed, like, his marriage lasted as long as it did because he was such a big kid, you know? Um, <laughs> yeah. But he, you know, he, at the time, I think he was 33. And I remember thinking to myself, God, if by the time I'm 33, I have a nice house like this, maybe not the family like that, you know. I think it's different if you're a daddy or if you're a mommy and you happen to be the one working. 
because mommy kind of needs to stay home. If dad leaves and come back, it's not such a big deal. But, you know, um, but that's segueing into a different area. Um, but John was awesome. It was a really good experience, although I was kind of ill-behaved on that set. And No, I don't, I don't believe that for a second. Yeah, it's more and more, well, you're stupid because the balloon doesn't get bigger, but it was kind of like more the 18-year-old, wow, Coke is fun. <laughs> style that balloon full of cocaine looks pretty cool well you know and bless his heart anthony michael hall and i have never quite been the same i think during time and this is something i've never really admitted i almost did on the e-entertainment 16 candles 20 year anniversary and they asked me so what was between you and michael hall and i was like "Mm, nothing (laughs) but i'm not gonna chicken out and michael if you are listening The first time you ever had anything to do with anybody in that way. Hmm. I took it. I Yay. took it that dork. I did. Yeah. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> I'm fucking 18 years. I was not 18 yet, though. I was still 17 and he was 15. Uh-oh. Technically, Uh-oh. it was not okay. statutory. Oh, it's all legal. Yeah. It's all legal if they're both minors, right? Yeah, that's fine. Well, bless your heart, Michael. It didn't take long. <laughs> <laughs> Woo! I'm sure Uma Thurman had it better than I did, but that's okay. <laughs> hey, yeah, that's all part of growing that. up. Yeah, <laughs> kind of. I wonder yeah, if you can... would ever admit to that publicly. Well, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Call him up. See if he'll do an interview. We'll get, yeah, it? we'll get him. Yeah, we'll, we'll get him on the show and see what he has to say. Yeah. Mm, I don't know. Sorry, what Mr. Hall. Ringwald. How was she? Was she? Uh, she pretty cool to work with, or? No. No, no comment. <laughs> Molly's a nice girl. She's a nice girl. Okay. She was a very good girl and a nice girl. And when I was behaving the way I did and she caught wind of it, um, her mother, who was very protective of her, kind of didn't like it much. So I was kind of – I ostracized myself, man. I did it to myself. I didn't know. I mean, if you want to talk about the Leanne today, I'm not – that Leanne, who was a total asshole. <laughs> you know, really, I was just sort of like, you know, a loose cannon, let loose. I turned 18, my mom went back to New York, and I went nuts, thinking, oh, sure. yay, I'm free, and I'm an adult. Look what I can do. <laughs> who, who, wouldn't, who wouldn't do that, you know? I mean, well, what, what you know, that age Molly never did anything like that. Oh, well, I mean, I mean there are people who Molly just Ring. wouldn't even think of doing things like that, much yeah, less course. do them. Yeah. You know, but I was I was of the Downey method. <laughs> Went to the Downey school. The Downey school of I can be a total asshole. And not that he's an asshole. He's just that bless his heart, man. He's just we've had this conversation before. And he just looked at me one day and said, Curtis, it's not that I'm addicted to any one thing. I'm just addicted to more. <laughs> yeah. Whatever it is I'm doing at the moment. More. Yeah. Excess. Excess. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's hard. This business is hard. It's not for the feeble-minded. It's not for the feeble-hearted. And it's definitely not for the feeble character because it's very easy to have your ego kind of take over. And, um, you know, I, I think this is where I can look at everything that's happened up until now and kind of take myself off the hook because I believe it was all in preparation to be able to guide my daughter okay. You know, I made all the mistakes for her. So unless the pressure of this business gets to her in a way where she's like, I can't take it. I'm depressed. I need a pill to make me stay awake or, you know, but if it gets to that, I would gladly be sued for however many millions of dollars are behind her because I want her to not be a fucking head case, man. Yeah. Oh yeah. You know, the kid needs to stay pristine. And if she needs to be a school teacher, who's got a really good voice and had fun when she was little experimenting in the business, better that than you know yeah Lindsay lohan yeah no shit right <laughs> you know yeah. it's a lot of pressure that goes along in this business it does sure, man. I, I honestly yeah. say i never got to the point where i had that kind of pressure on me and part of me is sorry but part of me is still grateful because i'd have gone right over the freaking edge man i'm sure i'm sure the way i was back then now yeah. not so much but yeah I'm sure it's, I, I mean, from thing, I mean, everything that I've always heard, you know, it sounds fucking just cutthroat, you know, it's, you know. Yeah, it can be. 
It can be. And I think it's cutthroat, not because people are mean. I don't think it's because people, I think it's a more of a fear-based thing than it is just an angry, I'm going to get you thing. I'll get there before you, you know, it's just all fear-based, fear-based and, and make you really self-conscious. And, 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 you know, if you're not a really strong, healthy, like psychologically person, Watch yeah. out, animals. You've got some seriously good handlers. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? Then again, you could have all the handlers in the world. If you don't listen and can't be talked to or reasoned with, mm-hmm. you know? Well, and like when we spoke before, you know, it was just, you know, I'm sure it's a thing that, that is constantly fucking with you too, is that, you know, like if I fuck up or if I'm not good enough, there's 20 people right behind me that'll take my place, you know? Oh, and, yeah. Well, and, and I tell that to my kid. It's like, look, you know, you're, you're up for this thing, which I cannot talk about. It's like the unmentionable thing. I signed, then I talked to the casting people today. He's like, what's an STFU clause? I was like, Junior, shut the fuck up. And he started laughing. He's like, oh, can I use that? I said, yes, the STFU clause. You got to sign it. You can't talk about, like, when she did the episode of House, I signed something for Universal and made her sign it too and handed it back into production. Like, you can't talk about the episode, what's going to happen on it. I mean, barely yeah. say that you're on the show. Because these guys will go right through your Facebook, your Twitter, your everything to see if you've slipped or said anything. So it's really important to just... Sure. So... If good things happen, then I'll tell you what time the show is on and on what channel. Cool. <laughs> when it's yeah, airing. Okay. Yeah, and yeah, I definitely do. Uh, here, here in a little bit, I do want to talk more about uh, about your daughter and and because uh, she's a very very talented young lady. Um, so <laughs> we'll get more into that, and you can you can just go on about your daughter for a little while here in a little well, bit. Well, that's too. okay. It's far more interesting than going on about myself, but that's no. okay. <laughs> Ew. Um. Well, that's so, just because yeah. I'm looking out my own window, you know. <laughs> well, let's jump to, uh, I don't know, you want to jump to Girlfriend from Hell? Talk, yeah. about that. Talk a little bit about Girlfriend from Hell? Sure. I wish we would do a sequel. I would love to do a sequel. That would be awesome. That's the first thing out of my mouth. That was probably the job that I enjoyed the most. Really? Of all of them. And it wasn't because I was the girlfriend. It was, just, it was just such a fun shoot, man. 18 days. I think he had six hundred thousand dollars. He came in under budget and came in early. I think we had the last day off. Damn wow. awesome. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. And he'll he'll deny it and tell you that Angel falls in love. His latest short film, not short film, but micro budget film, is the best one. But I still say Girlfriend from Hell was the best thing he's done. <laughs> Follow up Vampire and Night. Now, are you are you in that new one that Angel falls in love or whatever? Yeah, it's I like, I like Aunt Coco. Aunt Coco, like, right. I have, okay. He gives me little little tiny roles in all of his movies, on top of which I'll say that I was kind enough to extend my house to him for what started as just can I be there for 48 hours and it ended up being like four weekends. I thought I was going to lose my mind. <laughs> But it's good. I'm, I'm picky. I'm like, don't worry. I'm so OCD. Take your shoes off before you come in my house. I don't want outside dirt in my house. Bird shit's fine. <laughs> my bird. And it's processed millet. <laughs> 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 but so, yeah, it was kind of hard to have people in the house and the cat getting out because people don't open and close the door right. They leave it a jar, you know, just, oh, damage control. And it makes me kind of anxious. I have a little anxiety thing. But, yeah, Girlfriend from Hell, going back to the topic, was one of the best experiences I've had. I still talk to Leslie Dean. I talked to Dana Ashbrook. I just friended her. Sarah Katie Coughlin found me and friended me. She was the Bible. Oh, okay. Blonde hair and the glasses. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> so, right right. Was, this, was it just uh, was it an HBO run or was it just a straight to VHS? Or? Oh, it was straight to VHS, and I haven't seen Dime One. I mean, it went to a non-SAG uh, distribution company, so somehow the production company shut, like Girlfriend from Hell Productions, like shut down and disappeared, and somehow nobody's liable to make any residuals. So that's when I feel too bad about making copies of my DVD. And, Yes. And uh, one of the one of the questions that uh, you know we well we had asked you before was what was uh, you know what was one of your favorite lines from Girlfriend from Hell? 
Because you had so many great one-liners. The first one, yeah, I did. I wrote down, because, and it's only because somebody said, oh, my favorite line of yours, and I was in a panic going, how the hell do I answer this question? I don't know what my favorite, okay, maybe it's, oh, you're such a tramp, when you look in the mirror and say, oh, you're so, right after you turned into, and I thought, no, after watching the movie, I think it's, <laughs> I think it's when I'm downstairs messing with the radio, and I've got the wine bottle, and I'm just, you know, nobody's around, and I say, this is so boring. Oh, well, I guess I should go upstairs, hunt them down one by one, and kill them. <laughs> yeah. In my little nonchalant way. Mm, I guess. <laughs> I guess it's time to kill them all now. I'm bored. <laughs> Actually, I don't know how much Leanne was in that. I think a lot of Leanne was in that character. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You devil woman, you. I am a devil woman, and then I guess... Uh, <laughs> After we wrapped, I kind of hooked up with the director, Mr. Dan, and then he impregnated me. <laughs> that bastard. That bastard. And now I have the most amazing 22-year-old. He's a really cool kid. I was raised by a very smart woman who had her plans for me were to be well-spoken, not drop F-bombs, be literate go to, you know, Yale or Harvard, and I quit school, started doing movies, drugs. <laughs> I went to the, you know, graduated from the high school of CBGBs, and fuck you, Mom. <laughs> Just kind of didn't work out the way she had planned. <laughs> of course. <laughs> you know, but I think, I think all in all, everything I did, and I think I said this already once, leads me to who I am today and I like who I am today I like my ADHD I like the things about my ADD more than I don't like the things about it yeah but like I said I'm pretty candid I'll tell you pretty much anything so well we appreciate Shoot. that we appreciate that we do uh, I don't know that Michael Hall would appreciate it but hey ah <laughs> <laughs> uh, fuck him if he can't take a joke I already did that, and he wasn't happy when I was talking. <laughs> and it was a joke, apparently. Huh? <laughs> yeah, I guess. <laughs> How funny it was, but... <laughs> it's funny now. Next question. <laughs> okay. Todd, Todd, you got uh, some? We're dipping into the Critters to the main course. Yes. Um, just basically That's a roll yeah, on it. Well behaved. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe if you can also talk about the convention that you're recently at. You said you were sure. down in Florida. Oh, my God. That was the best. It was like being a carny without having to sleep under a train or wash in, like, bath water that's been used 12 times before. <laughs> yeah. That was great. It was really good. Um, okay. Oh, what do you want me to answer first? What do you want Just, to know? Uh, basically your role in Critters 2. Um, I played a really, really nice girl named Megan Morgan. Really? That was, like, such an acting job. That was a nice... <laughs> nice. I went right from that into Girlfriend from Hell, by the way. Um, but yeah, Megan Morgan was just basically a nice girl who was just a reporter looking to go to college and have her little paper. And there's a big, you know, the Critter Boys back. And, you know, it was good. I remember the reason I even got that. I was, and it kills me, man. I asked the casting director, what was the other girl's name? A girl named Cheryl. Oh, it drives me nuts. Cheryl, she couldn't drive a stick, and I could, and they couldn't figure out who they wanted to hire, and finally it came down to, can you drive a stick? And I said, yes, I can. And she could not, so no I won. <laughs> wow. Wow. It was good. I remember uh, they built a whole small town in this abandoned area, which I think was used by firemen. Um, as, as you know, you know light a fire, fire and, and practice, practice right? Practice. Yep, yep. But there were also these weird barracks, like at the top of the hill, where they taught me how to drive this stick. I mean, not that I didn't know how to drive a stick, but it was an old truck, so it was a three on the tree, which is a little oh, okay. different. Yeah. I'd go out for my little joy rides, and you know, one time we actually pulled over and we went in these barracks. It's really kind of creepy, and I don't know. <laughs> If it was some weird place for incarcerated people or the mentally ill or what that was all about, but it was kind of creepy. Um, but they built this really cool town. Some of it was facades, but some of it you could actually go in in this place. So they built Grover's Bend. It was so cool. Just going up to this little town every day that wasn't really anything. Yeah. Um, and everybody was really, was really nice. I don't think I had issues with anybody. I mean, Mick Garris, the director, uh, you know, 
he kind of had some pretty high potent agents, agents come visit, visit the set because, because I think he was looking, looking for representation, representation and, and um, I kind of did the old grip trick and took a bunch of wooden clothes pins and would just sneak around. I kept pins on the back of this guy's jacket so that by the time he went back to the parking lot and sat in his BMW, I'm sure he had about 15 clothes pins on his jacket. Yeah, the next day, Mick was like, well, I guess APA is not going to be calling me. And he just looked at me and I thought, hmm, oops, sorry, not really. It was fun. That's yeah. great. What's um, uh what state was that shot in? That was in California. We was drove it in California? up the uh, yeah. up the five to to Simi Valley, right oh, okay. by where uh, Magic Mountain is. So it was just like two exits past Magic Mountain and hang a right, and then go a couple lights and hang a left, and there was this cordoned off little dirt driveway that went up a hill to where this weird place was. But you know. Kudos to the location manager for finding that. Yeah, yeah. Yep. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Well, now you sound like Miley Cyrus on Saturday Night Live. That was pretty cool. That was pretty cool. Pretty cool. It's cool. cool. Yeah, it's the great Justin Bieber. That made me so happy. Wink, shoulder. Yeah, yeah. I never saw that, but it was, of course I did because of Jacqueline. So oh, yeah, I know you had brought up, uh, Todd, about uh, the uh, appearance thing yeah. at convention well, and whatnot. Right. Convention. Yeah, talk yeah. a little bit about that. Dude, this guy Ken Nelson finds me on Facebook, and I think it's because Donnie Opper had told him, well, why don't you get Leanne, you know, get Leanne to go. And he was like, oh, that's a great idea. Well, I'm friends with her on Facebook, friend her and ask her. Fine. So he did. And I kind of said, yeah, you know, and that's back in February, and then March comes along, and I'm, you know, on my couch, and my daughter looks at me and says, Mom, what's the matter? I said, I'm freaking out. She said, what's the matter? I said, well... What's going to happen? i got to leave the house. It's going to be at least four days, two travel days, and this hotel, and then the convention, and I don't leave home a lot, and I don't even, it's like this big unknown. I've never done a convention. She's like, Mom, it's March. Why don't you get worried, like, on the 18th of May? Because you're here now, so why don't you stay here now? And I'm thinking, oh, my God. Hence, <laughs> she's more of an adult and more, you know, level-headed than I'll ever be, because it's still my knee-jerk to be a total freak. Yeah. You know, tempered as it may seem. La, la, la. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, yeah, so I, I got over my fear with a lot of back and forth to this Ken Nelson guy and his friends, Robert Logue and Bob Slendor, who was the other promoter. And I think um, I, I had him nervous till about two weeks before the convention because I, I wouldn't call back and make the commitment, like, yes, get me an airplane ticket. So I finally did, and I went, and I had the best time. I want to do more. Forget the money you make signing. It's like, really? 15 bucks every time I do that? <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Well, and shit, that's, you're, you sound like one of, the, uh, one of the cheaper ones as far as that goes. I mean, all I see is like Ken, $20, 30 I'm telling you, and Ken advised me. He said, look, most people charge 20 but because this is your first one and it's a smaller – convention and it's also our first year it's our inaugural one i would advise that you charge 15 bucks for autographs on your stuff charge people ten dollars for an autograph if they bring you something of theirs and let them if they buy something let them take a picture you know for free so i said okay that's fine but the only caveat i put on if you take a picture with me then you have to friend me on facebook and post the picture otherwise no. You're cut off. No, because some people don't have Facebook, bless their hearts. Some functional people in the world who stay off the FB. I, I, was, I was a holdout for a long time, Dude, honestly. Facebook, fucking bullshit. Pick one, you know? Yeah. Anyway, yeah. but yeah, so I went, and I had the best time, man. I had the best time. And if these guys ever do another convention, because I know they lost a lot of money, but I think that supposedly happens every time it's the first go round. you lose money the first year it's just standard um but i'd go to any of their conventions forever and ever so i don't know if they're listening but ken bob i love you thank you thank you for busting my convention cherry in the gentle way you did (laughs) because now i'm convention happy but i know people in pittsburgh because there's a movie i did called the kid brother and it was shot there so they pretty much crewed up locally so all the Romero people were on our shoot. Yeah. 
Hell yes. Yeah, yeah. And my boyfriend at the time, his name is Nikki Tallow. Um, his his nickname is Bomba. A tattoo on my ass that used to say Bomba. <laughs> now it's a red rose with black flames coming up around it because one of my boyfriends was very threatened. So I fixed it. Now I wish I hadn't. Now I wished it still said Bomba. <laughs> can cover for that bomba oh well that's my nickname for my butt <laughs> but no i'm like little miss like i said i'll tell you anything so i just told him, oh, that's my boyfriend's nickname we'll get rid of it okay <laughs> so do you have any other uh any other appearances coming up this year i don't have any lined up i'm hoping to get into like the is it cult fiction i think in um or there's Fright Night. I think those are in October. And I want to okay. say they're in New Jersey. Cult Fiction, I think they're going to try to do another one. And they're talking about Atlanta. These are the same promoters who went to Jacksonville. But they'd like to go to a town that I think is more central and easy um, to get to as far as, you know. First, first of all, I wanted to ask, uh, did you get to talk to Camille Keaton at all or um, at the show or uh, Diane Thorne? She's I've talked like- to Diane Thorne very, very briefly, very briefly. I mean, she was dressed in her little leather and her little hat. Nazi hat. Yeah, yeah, she did her thing. Um, I talked to Sid Haig very briefly, but the person with whom I made good friends um, are an artist named Alexander Hamilton, mm-hmm. who is out of Austin, Texas. And <laughs> you can look him up. Alexander J. Hamilton, I think, is his Facebook name. But he's got this kind of troop of whack jobs that goes around. I mean, they walk on broken glass. There's a sword swallower. There's a fire blower. They're just, he's like nice. off the hook. Yeah, he was really cool. He, um, <laughs> I had left my coffee on a table outside, and he brought it in, and he was kind of looking for me. And I said, I think that's my coffee. If you found it over there, he said, yeah, I was looking for you. Here it is. And I said, did you do anything weird to it? He said, yeah, I dunked my balls in it. And I said, oh, awesome. Thanks for the <laughs> flavor. You know, and he's like Mr. Shock Value. He'll say things like that to see if he's dealing with some uptight person or if you're going to roll with it. And I yeah. did. We stayed friends after that for two days. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Um, and I talked to, of course, Don Opper. I made friends with Dee Wallace. She's really, really nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, she's actually pretty awesome. And back to that, leaving myself off the hook for stuff, she looked right at me. We went to dinner. She looks at me and she goes... What is it you feel so guilty about? You need to stop that. Whatever it is, tell yourself a different story. And I was shocked. I was like, wow, way to zero in on exactly what's going on behind the windows to my world. Yeah, yeah. She's very intuitive. She's a really neat person. Total healer, total in the realm of just, you know, feeling things and being very, very apt and accurate when she picks up on something. You know, can't help herself. Anyway, but so I made friends with her, and um, oh God, Fred Williamson, the Hammer. <laughs> yeah, the Hammer. Yeah, the Hammer. He was interesting. He was an interesting dude. And then the the Krishna Zombie, yeah. Michael yeah. Christopher, loved him. Mm-hmm. Loved him. What an awesome, sweet man that guy is. <laughs> Um, and another guy named Gary Clark. Gary Clark, oh yeah. Oh my God, I love him. Steel. He's my favorite. <laughs> He's such a gentle giant. What an amazing story he has. Yeah. Found out that he was adopted. I don't know. I mean, you could probably Google him and look up, you know, the articles and stuff. What an amazingly interesting story he has. Just a cool human being. Really cool human being. I would, I would love to do another convention where he is, so that I can hang out with him a little bit more. Right so, on. There. Oh, yeah, it's in my favorite movie, Day of the Dead, too, so it kind of. <laughs> there you go. Gary Carr's awesome. Yeah. Sid Haig is a really nice man, too. Yeah. Um, oh, Mink Stoll. I got to hear Oh, yeah. yeah. Love Mink Stoll. You know, it's so funny. We had the same theatrical agent for years and years and years, and I never, ever met her. And now, apparently, his sad story is that he's homeless and doing crack and, like, knocked at somebody's door within the last six months and, you know, asked for a coat or something warm to wear. And I'm thinking, what the fuck happened to you, dude? Wow. And there's an example. He was an agent. He wasn't even in front of the camera. Yeah. But the pressure fucking cracked the dude, man. Wow. So, I don't know. 
I would hope that I never run into him. If I do, you know, I don't even know what I would do. If if I ran into somebody like that, I, I would pray that I had a lot of fucking money so that I could take him, toss his ass into rehab, get him cleaned up, and you know, make an attempt at helping him. Yeah, and that's a shame. Him himself. You want to uh, roll into 1991? Yeah, let's do that. What was 1991? Talk, I talk a little rock and roll high school forever. Oh, well, I, yes. that 1991 is when it came out, I guess. But yeah, 1980, no, 1990. Okay, I'm just Probably. so I have to tell you, I'm like looking at the aviary. I'm looking at two pairs of birds, fucking like rabbits, <laughs> and one of them is like humping his. What are you doing? There's some gay bird thing going on over there. They're both humping the perch they're on. I do not understand. It's springtime. Uh, That's great. It's not. <laughs> I've got 36 parakeets. I don't need any more. I took the breed <laughs> off of the cages because I couldn't take it anymore. And even then, they're just horny birds. Horny, <laughs> aggressive birds. They'll kill each other. <coughs> in space. Okay. okay, so 1991, Rock and Roll High School Forever. I actually had a lot of fun on that movie, too. That yeah, would be good. my next favorite after Girlfriend from Hell, probably. Cool, cool. What, what do you want? Um, well, one of the questions that I had that I had had for you before was uh, how how cool was it working with Mary Warnoff? Um, she's a oh, fucking right. cult legend, you know. Yeah. See, I got to talk to her a little bit, but I didn't really think. Did I have one scene with her? I think there was one scene where she was admonishing us from behind her desk. Yeah. But I was a kid and she was a grown up, and there was a split. So sure. we kind of didn't hang out with the grown ups. That's not cool. Yeah, yeah. Especially yeah. when you're too busy, you know, in the makeup chair that goes around like that. I happen to be breastfeeding Tyler at the time. So what do I do? I whip out my tit and just like squeeze the breast milk at everybody <laughs> while I'm going around in a circle. Yeah, I was a little wild. <laughs> then Evan Richard, he's like, I want to taste some breast milk. And everybody looked at him like, are you fucking insane? <laughs> serious? He's like, yeah. And he put his hand out and I squirted a little and he went, oh, it's sweet. I said, yeah. <laughs> Human pus. Great. That's it's awesome. What it is? I mean, milk is cow pus. If you think about it, <laughs> yeah, fucking disgusting. It's not just, it's just soy milk. <laughs> <laughs> Who, who'd you connect with most on the set? The makeup artist Karen Dahl, the, to whom I still speak frequently. Nice. To whom I sold my African gray parrot. The other one that meowed. The second one that was on the floor took her nut and then took off. Yeah, got that bird back. I want to say. I guess it'll be, is it two years ago now? Yeah, I guess I got her back two years ago after a 17-year hiatus of bird ownership. She calls me and says, Leanne. I said, yeah. She said, would you mind taking the bird back temporarily? And I thought, temporarily, permanently? I just got myself another African gray because I missed this one so much. She's like, oh, would you take it back? Because you're in the bird world than I am. I said, really, what would make you think that? Horny parakeets. <laughs> um, yeah, so I took the bird back. But I connected most with Karen for whatever reason. I hung out with her and stayed friends with her. Corey was nice, but he was a little messed up at that time. Sure. Um, yeah. Yeah. And actually, I bonded with the people who did the music on that. Yeah, um, that, was, that was one thing yeah. I was going to ask you is um, – I know Alain said, Johannes, man. Alain yeah. Johannes, and and rest in peace, Natasha Snyder, his his wife, girlfriend. Um, she passed away, you know, I think in two thousand nine, and I actually lost track of them. But Jack Irons, who ended up going to Pearl Jam to be their drummer, and Alain and Natasha and Rick, their bass player. I think all these guys played with Queens of the Stone Age at one time or another. Cool. Um, yeah, really cool people. And now they're all really super busy, but, like, I get in a hello here and there on Facebook. And I remember this little groupie girl, Danae. I, I'm sorry, Danae. But she, she, like, hung around with Jack, and she was just, you know, she seemed very groupie-like to me. But then he ended up marrying her, and I think they have two kids together, and they're still together, which I think is beautiful. Wow. It makes me really happy. Now, I know you're, you know, you're a pretty musically inclined person yourself. Did you guys have any, uh, any input as far as the music? No input. I just had to learn stuff, and there was one song, and I can't, you know, I couldn't remember it if you asked me, which is kind of sad that yeah, we went into the studio and had to sing some backups on it. Yeah, um, we, know, we know all the songs, yeah. so uh, was it maybe Dare Dreamer? Dare Dreamer. It might have been Dare Dreamer. Name them. There was Dare Dreamer. Yeah. Uh, Rock um, Danny. 
Rockus Danny, that's the one I was thinking. Rockus Danny, that's the one. Yeah, that's the one I was thinking. I was trying to. That's the one that we, I think, went in and sang some backups. We got to pee on that a little bit. Nice. (laughs) Studio. And I remember going to a rehearsal space to rehearse all the stuff. Um, And I remember in the audition process, and you can find her um, on my Facebook, too. Initials DG Brock. That's the director. She's still around. And um, one of the questions she asked me, and I think it was the second or third call, that was probably the final call back. She said, now my bullshit detector is on. So if you're telling me you play guitar, you better play guitar. I was like, dude, I play guitar. I do. I swear to God, I do. So that was great. I don't play lead guitar, though. And I think Stella was a lead guitar player. So I don't know how accurate or how fucked up the shots looked when I was playing the lead guitar line on one of those songs. Um, and, and I'm kind of sad that I don't play lead guitar, but it scares me too much pressure. I like rhythm. Yeah. Just, it's easier just stick to the rhythm. Huh? I'm what's just it, lazy. What's it with uh, Corey Feldman's uh, Michael Jackson fetish in every movie? <laughs> you know, I think that started long ago. I think Corey is, is, is unfortunately, a product of two parents who were my stellar opposite. Happy to spend his money. Mm-hmm. Their fucking kid may have been their next big screen TV. You know, I think there was a little bit of that going on. Um, and I think because of that and the fact that Corey was a working child actor and had issues with his parents, Michael Jackson may have, uh, may have, empathized with that a little bit and I sure. believe that he knew Michael. I believe yeah, I think they that were he friends, spent yeah. time with Michael. I yeah. believe that there was a time where he saw quite a lot of Michael. Um, and I think that was just his way of representing, paying back, respecting, you know, maybe he got a little carried away with it. And we did kind of look at him and go, oh, so you think you're Michael Jackson? Okay. Because he was doing a little move. And he was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, I don't know. You know, I know he plays in a band now, and I don't know how many MJ moves he's busting these days. Um, and I don't really talk to him, although I would love to say hi. I think we're friends on Facebook. I'm not sure. And Facebook's good to have all your old friends be your friends again. But, you know, realistically, do yeah. I talk to them every day? Oh, yeah. <laughs> There are the same four or five people that I talk to regularly on Facebook who happen to have known me since I'm two years old, you know? So yeah. there are friends, and then there are friends, and then there are fans, and then there are, you know, friendly fans. I mean, I'm happy to talk to anybody. Start yeah. stalking me, then we got a fucking problem. But, you know. <laughs> Do you have any, like, funny stories, like, on the set or anything that's really memorable about filming that movie? Huh. Wow. Other other than the breast milk yeah, incident, breast milk yeah, bre- there were like bre- breast milk incidents, or maybe just the one. I'm drawing a blank. I mean, you know, I probably, <laughs> hopefully, Corey is is okay with his past. I mean, there were there were multiple requests for his cousin to borrow my car because there needed to be a script picked up. When really. You mean you want your cousin to go to your dealer's house and get you a little more fucking <laughs> smack so you can snort it between takes? Uh, no, I don't think so. Have your agent messenger the script. How about that, Corey? You're Corey Feldman. <laughs> you know, and the constant makeup artist going, um, Corey's nose is, is needs powdered. That was like when the brown <laughs> would start coming out his nose. I know, just fuck, man. Oh, God, I hope my daughter never gets like that. I hope <laughs> I kill myself and her and end up on the news for that before she ends up doing anything like that. Man, I hope this business does not fuck with her. God forbid. <laughs> Seriously, you know, because, yeah. you know, Corey's alive, thank God. But, you know, look at Corey Haim. Look at all these yeah. motherfuckers that can't take it and just off themselves, man. Yeah. Another question I had for you, it's kind of a two-parter. Um, what's a project that you worked on that you – really um that you really liked um and but you didn't think it got what's we got an issue Zoddy, can you hear us can you hear us yeah. okay um yeah that would probably be a movie called the failures that was directed by a director named tim hunter who okay. is also the one who directed my sons of anarchy episode okay um, who i met right after baby it's you back in 1982 okay 
Um, I don't think that movie got a fair shake. It was it was a decent little movie. The subject wasn't necessarily great. I played the mom who I guess killed herself, and there's the girl, uh, the daughter, who is just totally fucked up and behaves like I used to when I was sixteen. <laughs> you know, dressing goth, being punk, just you know, and this photographer and their whole kind of friendship that maybe leads her to not want to go kill herself like mom or whatever. So I just, I don't know. I, I think that movie could have done a little bit better. And I don't know if it was the promotion of it or the lack of promotion of it. Or I just, you just never know, you know, movies get buried and shelved for yeah. many reasons, mm -hmm. but I wish that had come out a little more visibly. Not because my part was so great, but because I loved him and it was kind of a cool little, um, and what's a, you know, what's a movie that, you know, not necessarily your performance, but what's a movie that you worked on or any, any project really that you weren't so thrilled with? Kid Brother. I think I could have done a lot better on that. I think I could have done a lot better on that. I remember the very last scene after my little legless brother goes missing, I freak out and I go and I think he's jumped in the river. So I jump in the river. You know, and it's the scene, like, right before that, my tirade, my little, like, you know, anger management scene where I'm just like, and you this, and you that. And there were really no levels to it. And partly it was the director. I mean, after 20 takes, and now I'm hoarse, and he's like, give me more. I want you to give. It's like, what more? Like, do you want me to just go to 105% and stay 105 I mean, because then there's nowhere to, there's no arc to it. There's no build. There's no... Nothing's going on except just a blah, which, you know, personally in my life, some of the things I spoke about earlier of which I, about which I'm not too proud, yeah. you know, I've, I've been ragey like that. And I know when you're stuck in something like that, it's like being a fucking psycho. Yeah. You know? But I don't know that that character really needed to do that like that. So if I were to go back, there are a couple things in that performance that I would probably do differently. Now, not necessarily like your, you know, your performance, but was there... Okay, you said that, huh? Yeah, well, no, that's fine. That's fine. Well, I mean, but, I didn't um... like... Okay, how about that movie? It was supposed to be a seven-week shoot in Pittsburgh. Uh-huh. Right outside of Pittsburgh. How about 14 freaking weeks? How about the director, you know, had won all kinds of awards for a movie called Pale Face or Visage Pal that was a uh, um, uh, Japanese... Canadian co-production, I want to say. Hmm. Um, so he came in because, you know, I am Claude Gagnon. Fine, great, Claude. But now, let's see, Caitlin Clark, who played my mom, has lost two national commercials. Zach Grenier has now not been able to go do this play that he wanted to do. And I just got a three-picture deal blown because you, after fucking 14 weeks... 14 weeks, 14 weeks, so 14 <laughs> weeks, and there was no, you know, after all that, fine. Fucking three-picture deal with New Line oh. Cinema, a movie called My Demon Lover, um, opposite Scott Valentine, which was eventually that role played by Michelle Little. So, you know, I suppose I could go back. I mean, and I am, and I'm, I'm trying not to have the angry feeling, and it's it's dissipated. I'm very proud of myself for that feeling, <laughs> you know? But, God, that pissed me off. Oh, yeah. Like, the whole fucking thing just pissed me off. You know, wow. 14 weeks in Pittsburgh. I moved out of the hotel, ended up moving in with Bamba, more cocaine, you know? <laughs> I was just everybody... Caitlin was drinking. Zach was drinking. One of the French actors got so pissed off that he took a bunch of garbage out of the mailbox and put it in the director's fucking, or out of the garbage and put it in the director's mailbox in the production. <laughs> I mean, everybody was disgruntled, pissed off, drinking, smoking, and doing everything they could possibly do to keep themselves medicated, self-medicated, to just get through to the, whenever the end was, nobody knew. Yeah. 14 and a half fucking weeks. And it was in a little town called West Aliquippa, which is, you know, Anybody who's listening to this who's from Beaver, Pennsylvania, West Aliquippa, Aliquippa, this is a little town where everybody's probably on welfare, food stamps, government assistance, 
you know, brothers and sisters are married and having kids. Sorry. <laughs> don't mean that. Do mean it. Don't mean it. <laughs> Maybe I didn't say that. But there's one bridge. It's like this rickety ass fucking bridge. And I, I, it's like two teeny tiny lanes. And you've got to go down off the main road, down like, you know, an eighth of a mile long bridge, maybe, into this town, which is surrounded by a steel mill, which has been abandoned now for years. And most of these people in this town probably worked at that place. But now it's just like white trash, like. Who the fuck wouldn't get depressed going there every day for 14 weeks? Oh, my yeah. God. It just, it was hard. It was hard. That one was a tough one. Huh. Yeah. Not not so fun memories. Is that a better answer? Oh, yeah, that's yeah, great. That's great. great. Uh-huh. That's great. <laughs> I, like, I enjoyed both answers. Yeah. Aw, <laughs> thank you. You're welcome. Do you have any, any other questions? Yeah, what's, uh, you know, what's something that you're – you gonna be working on here in the future? If have you, uh, is there any projects you're looking at? Or well, there's the shut the fuck up clause um, project <laughs> that I can't yeah. talk about that has to do with my daughter. Um, <laughs> um, let's see. I can talk about the fact that I recorded ten songs in the studio with her, and yeah. you know, it's just basically been she and me. I won't say against the world. <laughs> But it's been she and me in the studio, so I guess that makes us. We just co-produced her first album, which most people would tell me just leave it a demo. But like, I'm I'm hot to release stuff on iTunes because I think that'll alleviate all of my copyright paperwork. Yeah, <laughs> I don't want to send it that way. You know, I think iTunes automatically does it and sends something to the Library of Congress. But anyway, that's my crazy paperwork. I don't want to deal with it story um but yeah her album i can't wait to release some of that stuff um i played guitars on some of it i played a couple overdubs on the piano on some of it um i i sang harmonies on a lot of the songs um which is a lot of fun and it's just been a really really cool process and um, the album's called bridges and i'm hoping i can release at least some singles from it over the summer one by one um we're supposed to go in the studio I'm hoping for our last day and lay harmonies on the next six songs up. Um, we had to do re- redo some guitars last Saturday, um, so we didn't just get to blast all the harmonies out. So I'm looking forward to having that come out. Um, and I kind of want to delve into music a little bit more because I think I really like it. And it, it's something with which I've toyed so many times over my whole span. Mm-hmm. Um, but it's always been a scary thing. Because at least acting, you're saying somebody else's words. Camera starts and stops. You can do it over and over again. Do getting on a stage and playing a song in front of an audience, you can't stop. You, yeah. You got to <laughs> oh, wow. Really? Yeah. So it kind of puts you on the spot, and I've been kind of a coward, I'll say it. Coward. <laughs> you know, um, about that. So I look forward to hopefully having the privilege of being able to perform with my daughter a little bit more. Yeah. Um, are, are we thinking possible Eradicators reunion, maybe? Oh, that would be something. <laughs> I think that would be like a living room reunion, which would not be a public showing of anything. Oh. But that would kind of be, I, you know, I don't know. Maybe there's a ref- abandoned refrigerator someplace that we could, you know, do a dance around. Appliance worship. Yep. Appliance <laughs> worship. And that lady. Oh, my God. Edna Snodgrass. <laughs> Edna Snodgrass. Listen to you. Edna oh, Snodgrass has a surgery. Lithuanian. Yeah. Patrick, that's right. <laughs> Lithuania. <laughs> um, now, as far as, as your uh, your daughter's music, I listened to a little bit of it on Facebook, and that was just kind of like rough cuts, right? That's rough cuts. There's been so much done. You know, and Seasons is the only one that had any harmonies on it, but I put it up because I love I'm that really one, proud of way. that. <laughs> That was a really good song. I mean, and when you listen to it, I mean, she's, like I said before, really, really talented. And, uh, she, I mean, she puts, you can tell when you listen to it, she puts more thought into her music than most grown people do, you know? Um, she seems like a real old soul, really, you know? Yeah, she seems like a real old soul to me, too. I mean, I, I think if if it doesn't sound too awful, I'm very privileged to, to have the children that I do, you know, for different reasons. Um, and, and she's obviously my only girl. Um, 
And I was so worried when I was pregnant, like, am I going to have to fight for my husband's attention with this girl? Am I going to be jealous of it? Am I going to, what's that going to be like? And it's still the opposite. (laughs) But yeah, I mean, she, she does, she puts a lot of thought into it. Um, And when she wrote those songs, it was mostly because she was in a songwriting workshop with a woman named Layla Steinberg, who was Tupac's first mentor and manager. Um, of all bizarre things, because Jacqueline's music is obviously not hip hop or rap or anything right. else. You know, Layla's son is also in it. And if you see a post on my Facebook page, that's his very first video. And he's wearing a Jack Rocks t shirt while he's playing basketball because Jack was in the studio. So nice. that was his way of including her, you know, and uh, representing. <laughs> it's very cute. Take a second and uh, kind of tell everybody where um, we can find her uh, her music at it. I mean, if you want to drop the, the name of the Facebook sure. page or um, whatever. I actually, there's a Facebook page. It's Jack Rocks Music, and that's J-A-Q-R-O-X-M-U-S-I-C. So that's all one word. Jack Rocks Music, I think is her, I think, listen to me, I think is her page. And um, I kind of, because <laughs> my very glamorous life, I also have a glamorous bank account. I built the website for her, which... <laughs> from some ICM agent says needs to pop more, but we'll get it to pop when I have money to have a webmaster pop it. How about that? Cause I don't write <laughs> HTML, you know, and when it was popping a little bit, it also wasn't working and it also wasn't something that I could just hack into and update. Yeah. So I had to dumb it down because <laughs> that's where I'm dumb. You know, <laughs> give me a template for the website and show me where to point. I know how to make a hot link. But oh, yeah. <laughs> you know? So, but her website is www.jackrocks, J A Q R O X dot com. Um, one of the decisions, I hope she doesn't come back to me and go, Why did you listen to me when I said Jack Rocks that I like that? Because it's so stupid. But, you know. <laughs> the thought of everything brands itself. So you might as well just start branding yourself now. So what do you want it to be? You know, we talked about it and Jack rocks is what came up. So hopefully, hopefully she'll still like that in a couple of years. Kind of, you know, our, our show is mainly, you know, horror exploitation, stuff like that. What's your favorite horror movie? Well, I have lots of favorite horror movies. I think the very first one I ever saw was Rosemary's baby. And like, I think it bored me. I didn't even scare me. I was bored, but I was like, what, eight, nine? And, you know, somebody said, oh, you want to watch a scary movie? Let's watch Rosemary's Baby. And I'm thinking, okay, whatever. And there's just like crazy Ruth Gordon feeding, you know, Mia Farrow raw steak. You know, I'm like, what the fuck is this? You know, because I wasn't raised Catholic or anything else. So like God and the devil and the possession and all, it didn't really make much sense to me. It's like I kind of got it when The Exorcist came out because her head was spinning around. But um, I think, you know, it's hard to say which one my favorite, but I think I have to say Reanimator. Brain Damaged is another good one. Yeah. You ever seen Brain Damaged? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, my God. Aylmer. I want it. Everybody should have an Aylmer. <laughs> <laughs> we we'll take you on a walk. Let's go for a walk, Brian. <laughs> Hell, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Reanimator, Basket Case, and Brain Damaged are probably up there. Frank and Hooker was okay. Yeah. I like, yeah, I like, I dig Frank Henenlotter's stuff. He, uh, oh, yeah. he, the newest one he did was called Bad Biology. Have you seen that? No, I have not. Oh, good Lord. It's great, great piece of sleaze. Hey guys, welcome back to Behind the Mask. Hey, hey. That was a great, great interview with, uh, our dear friend Leanne. She is awesome. Yeah, she's, she's the shit. We really appreciate it, Leanne. Thank you, Leanne. Um, this portion, we kind of want to get into some, I think, oh, is that, uh, yeah, if you want to know what that uh, beeping is, I think that's a Red Rocket's uh, <laughs> fire alarm. Oh, <laughs> can you hear it, man? My signature? <laughs> your, sig- your signature, yeah. yeah. You, it's you it's like, it? what? It's like MasterCard. It's everywhere I want to be. <laughs> <laughs> I told him to change his batteries. <laughs> And I won't do it. I don't change for anybody. Not you, <laughs> not Leanne, not Lush. <laughs> Nobody. Nobody. <laughs> Nobody. Um, yeah, I think uh, this is this is kind of 
towards the tail end of the show, so we're going to get into a few fan questions, I think, that we got on Facebook. What do we got here? Let's see. We got a... First of all, we got a question from Chris Blackshear, our good buddy Chris. Mr. Chris. Okay. Chris writes... What is your take on the real animal killings in film, like a cannibal films from the 70s? Mm. Yeah, well, that's, um, that's a ride wrong. line there. <laughs> I mean, you're bleeding for your art, or something is. <laughs> yeah, the you animal. Know. Yeah. You, you, know um, what, you know what my take is on it? I don't really like the whole you know animal killings, but, well, I mean, from a certain extent, like, like for art, like I don't mind it. Um, I think it's the same as, you know, like, as a, you know, hunting as a sport. I find it yeah, to be the which, same. Yeah, which I think is wrong. I think hunting is, for sport is wrong, so that's where we differ. I don't, I don't think, I mean, I'm all for killing animals, you know, use them for clothes and use them to eat them. I mean, I ain't no vegetarian and, you know, PETA can get off my lawn. It's, <laughs> but as, yeah, I don't believe in hunting for sport. I just think it's it's barbaric and it's just a waste. It's just a waste more than anything. And yeah, I mean, if you're killing them for a movie, like I said, it, it builds your reputation for the movie. But I mean, I don't know. I dude, cannibal Holocaust. The most brutal thing in that whole movie for me was not the impaling through the vaginas. It was that brutal. That was that brutality, that turtle, man, that was the most disgusting thing to me. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, they're you know, I think their justification of that was that you know the the tribes people that they that they used in the movie, they all ate the animals that were killed. So, mm-hmm. oh, I didn't know that. Did yeah. they really? That's what they said anyway. I mean, um, so I mean, that's what they you know they used that to kind of justify them doing it. Um, which you know, if that's the case, and you know, the animal didn't go to waste, and. Uh, <laughs> You know, and it's not a human being, so I don't. I don't really believe in exploiting animals because, once again, I'm not PETA for crying out loud. They're yeah. not. They don't have rights. Um, they don't wear <laughs> pants. I don't wear pants. <laughs> um, so yeah, that is. If, if that's the a goat wearing a t-shirt one time, though, that was pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> that's cute. What about those snakeskin um, boots that you always wear, Red Rocket? Oh man. <laughs> yep. Yep. Um. But, you know, that is, it's one of those lines and it's one of those gray areas. I mean, if they're going to get me on a technicality like that, I, I don't know. I, I withdraw my, my claim. I, I don't know. No comments. Well, I think in, in like in Cannibal Holocaust, I think the fact that they really killed those animals, it made everything else seem that much more intense, I thought, you know? It, uh, I agree with you. I agree with you. It made you know, the as far as the human... Yeah. A, a little more real too, you know. Yeah, it did absolutely. And some people can't really take that. I mean, I, I actually, I mean, it sounds sick, but I mean, I, I mean, I love the, I love the cannibal films, and uh, like yeah. I wouldn't change anything about them because even the animal killings. I mean, it's bad and everything, but uh, I mean, it, it makes them unique, and it, it makes them unique. So, yeah. um, and of course, I heard you know they're gonna edit cannibal. Holocaust or whatever they're talking about that for the Blu-ray coming out and really um, yeah they're supposed to have a cut version coming out fuck that without the animal killings and which I've heard on you know separate podcasts people you know they talk about it and stuff which um, of course you know you got to go with the original like you're saying you know yeah like Lush would say you know you can't you can't come aw- get away from you know the director's uh, creativity you know I mean yeah I don't. I don't know if I'm. I'm not saying I'm for the animal killings, but I'm definitely not for you know censoring art. You know, I think. I don't know. I just think it violates certain rights. I think we should have. I mean, if it's offensive, then stay away from it, or keep your kids away from it, or you know, regulate it, but don't censor it. You know, exactly. If you have to keep it behind a counter, keep it behind a counter if you have to, but make it a you know. Don't censor it. I would be very upset if someone did that with something I did. You know, even if maybe maybe it's something I personally didn't find offensive, and you know, because anybody can find offense in anything. Maybe five hundred people don't, one person does. So I'd be pretty upset. I, I think a few more people find more offense than one than the animal butcher, but 
you know. Yeah. And every, everybody's so sensitive nowadays, it's ridiculous. Like, Well, there's, yeah, I mean, there's people that'll get offended by, you know, a woman breastfeeding in public, but then they'll fucking go. You know, <laughs> I'd do if they're pancakes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but no, I mean, but then they'll go and they'll, you know, watch something more extreme, you know. Or they they'll go out and they'll fucking slaughter an animal, you know, whatever. But I mean, it just you know, people are offended by different shit, you know, and it's uh, you know, it's just a matter, you know, yeah. If you if if you have any kind of idea of what the movie's about and it doesn't sound like your thing, don't fucking watch it, you know. Yeah, and exactly. You know, just stay the fuck away from it. If you don't see it, you don't have to bitch about it. Just pretend like it's not even fucking there. I I learned I learned the hard way, you know. I I watched that Jeffrey Dahmer bio movie, and it turned out to be nothing but a giant or mass orgy and no killing. And I'm like, you know what? <laughs> I learned my lesson. I pick and choose my battles. Um, <laughs> yeah. But that yeah, that's a story of its own. But yeah, I agree with you totally. Don't don't censorship art. And you know what? Like I said, there's to, there's a lot of stuff I'm against, and I would never show um, kids of mine totally. But you know, I. I just believe in blanketing rules, you know. You can't sit there and pick and choose. You got to blanket it, you know. So yeah. that's right. I don't want to see Marilyn Manson's ass cheeks, but man, I'm not going to stop the guy. <laughs> right? Yeah, hey, they're pretty nice ass cheeks, though. <sighs> he needs to tan. <laughs> I like him white. Could help yeah, his career out. He wouldn't be Marilyn Manson anymore with tan. Come on. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Whatever happened to that loser? He just fell off the face of the earth. You know, he still makes music, and I still see updates, and he's still got stuff. Like he's got an album, I think, coming out in the in the can right now. And you know, and ooh, big announcement for him: Twiggy Ramirez is back in the band this year. Nobody cares. It's 2011. You know? <laughs> I, yeah, I just, he he's, had his. He's not extreme anymore, even though he probably no, was he, never. To me, he never was. I mean, yeah. I mean, he he. I don't know. He's an Alice Cooper wannabe. I just Alice Cooper gets my respect, man. Uh, you know. Yeah. Which, by the way, I saw a video. Alice Cooper, Johnny Depp joined Alice Cooper on stage at an intimate venue in London. It was pretty cool. They played uh, um, "I'm 18" and "Schools Out." It was pretty neat. You know. Yeah. Jack Sparrow gets around. Which kind of brings us into uh, our next question from Chris. Uh, it's kind of a two-part, three-part question, actually. Well, uh, well hold on. Are we, stingy. Are, hold on. Are we all agreed that we're okay with uh, killing animals? You know, if it's, uh, <laughs> if it's I don't know. Film? Like I said, I guess if you eat them, <laughs> if you eat them and you make boots out of them and all that good stuff, then sure, do whatever you want. I'm just saying I can't, prov- I can't do anything about it. And then after that's all done, you know, keep your kids away from it <laughs> if you don't want them to see it. Just as long as you eat it, you can produce it, you know, okay. and then I'll choose not to watch it. Okay. Moving on. Moving on. <laughs> okay, he writes, uh, why are there so many death metal vocalists screaming in their songs? He's like, I'm all, I'm all for expression of rage, but being, being able to somewhat understand the poetic outbursts is important. Too, I think I'll, I'll take that one. You know, it's easy. Death metal gives an opportunity to just regular Joes who can't sing. It's like, hey, here's some music where I can get by just by screaming my lung and you know grunting my lungs out. Which I'm not saying that's not a skill. I can't, I can't do a death grunt. You know, for doing that for an hour and a half, that skill. You know, but you know they can't. It's a different. It's not singing. You know, we're not all born with those voices. My grandmother might hear, um, you know, whatever. My grandmother thinks Metallica is the heaviest band in the world. You know, that's how <laughs> out of touch all these people are. It's like, you know, the household names. But you know, they hear if they if they heard something like Slayer or Cannibal Corpse or Deicide or whatever, and it's just some guy yelling or grunting, they they would probably judge it like this. I my dad said it. He's like, I can scream for three three hours. I'm like, I'd like to see a try. Yeah, you not know, like that, you can't. <laughs> no, 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 no. That shreds your vocal cords. I tried to do it. And, you know, even the death gra- – it doesn't matter what it is. If it's like a Phil Anselmo, like just like a high-pitched cat scream, that stuff takes skill. It's not, you know, without labor, trust me. And they, they pay the toll too. So, you know, they put in almost as much work as any – Steve Perry, you know. Yeah. So you're soaring tenors. Yeah. 
which I don't even know where, where you'd classify those vocalists. Like, what are you? Are you a baritone, a tenor? Uh, I'm a cat pitch. <laughs> like, like I'm a I'm a warthog grunt. Like, okay. <laughs> How do I, where do I find that on the piano keys? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Which, by the way, the Beth Death. I mean, I know I'm a fanboy and I talk about him all the time, but Michael Arkerfeld of Opeth is the best Death Grunt. He's got the best growls and the biz. Yeah. But anyway, moving on. And that guy can sing too, so he's got it all. Yeah. Moving on is a third part question, which I think. Uh... This is uh, right up Lush's alley. Uh, how many, <laughs> how many sexual sixty-eight positions should you accept without returning the favor? Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna keep this real simple. I'm just gonna say uh, I I return the favor every time. <laughs> every time. I know from experience, dude. It's uh, you you got you got to reciprocate, man. You got to fucking reciprocate. <laughs> <laughs> now okay am I the only one here that doesn't know what 68 is supposed to mean <laughs> yeah well okay you guys gotta fill me in I'm out of this inside joke I know what a 69 is I mean I went to grade school we all know that um, what's a 68 I shudder to think well it's I think what he's getting at there is like you know <laughs> 68 positions um I don't know if he's if he's trying to say, you know, if he's talking about, yeah, I think he's talking about, you know, almost a 69 to where, you know, you're you're getting some action but the other person's not quite yet. Uh, I don't know, Chris, get on here and on the Facebook page and correct me if I'm wrong, but he's probably you know, going to say it was a typo. <laughs> it could be, it could be. But I think that maybe that's what he's getting at. I think know. that's what he's getting at too, yeah. 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 So, yeah, I mean, I, I always return the favor. Uh, You're uh, decent, Lush. I know. I, 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 try to be, I try to be kind in, in those ways. You're like a, you're like a Cretan Santa Claus. <laughs> he was a deviant. Yeah. A deviant Santa. <laughs> Good question, Chris. Yes. Yeah, great question. Keep, uh, those keep right them coming, out, Chris. Keep, keep asking those questions, and we'll keep having him answer them, because I can't answer those questions. And I think Riverman will get in trouble, so you keep directing uh, to that. Yeah, my, my old lady's pretty cool about that shit, you know. And because I return the favor, that's why. Oh, <laughs> shut you up. It, you live by it. No, you got to <laughs> teach. Preach what you teach, man. There you go. It's not that I get in trouble. I just want to keep my... Uh... My sexual fantasies and um, <laughs> everything else off the show, but <laughs> hey. whatever. We're gonna become Howard Stern slowly but surely. We'll merge into that. Yeah, realm. we'll merge into it. We're still early in the show. I'm but we'll high pitch Eric on. We gotta get high pitch Eric on the show. Hi. Oh. 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 <laughs> I. Yeah, and get Richard Christie, dude. He's a big horror fan. You know, I brought that up the other day, not to – I was talking to somebody else. But, you know, you actually had an email exchange with Richard Christie one time. And he would be a double dose because he's done some low-budget horror and, of course, a great Iced drummer. Earth. Yeah, Iced Earth, uh, Control Denied, Death. Death. He's been – he's, you know, pretty prominent in the, the metal scene, you know. So he could kind of cover everything, kind of in the way Phil and Selma could. He could talk our ears off of that horror you know, as well as oh music. yeah, I, I talked to him for a while about uh, Romero. He's a big Romero junkie, just like me. So uh, yeah, he'd be a good person to talk to. You, we should reach out to him. We you know? should, we man. Should, we should, you know, and he's totally somebody that would, uh, I think, give us the time of day. You know, respect. Fuck oh, yeah. I agree, man. Well, we got uh, we got another question. It's actually uh, from Ryan, uh, my broham, my uh, brother from the same mother. <laughs> um. And he asks, uh, he wants us to talk about characters and shows that promote family values. Um, Danny who, Tanner. Who are really just hypocritical trash. Which, you know. Oh, Danny like, Tanner. Dan, okay, okay, let me finish the question. <laughs> like Full House, where Stephanie Tanner turned into a really big coke slash meth or druggie who can't keep her legs crossed and keep popping out Ill- Ill- illegitimate children. Um. And her father, Danny Tanner, slash Bob Saget, whose comedy is almost as dirty as Andrew Dice Clay. 
I, I didn't hear about the illegitimate children. Well, I, I don't know about that, but I mean... I, but I, I am willing to give her on that. <laughs> you know, she's got a pair on her, I tell you what. God, yeah. go to the Facebook page. Go to the Facebook page. He, he put a picture of her on I, there. You know what? I've been looking at it for the last 20 minutes. It's already oh. on my... Any, <laughs> anybody listening to the show right now, go to the Behind the Mask Facebook page. And it will it might be... You might have to scroll down a little bit. But you'll find a recent picture of uh, Stephanie Tanner from Full House. And she looks fucking good. I mean, look at this picture. And this is exactly what I would not get offended at, breastfeeding wise, at a dentist. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> eat, eat your Denver it looks, omelet while you're watching. Yeah. It. If it looks like what you're eating at Denny's, then be offended. <laughs> but not, not those. I don't want my titties to look like a grand slam for fuck's sake. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, um, <laughs> but yeah, I didn't know about the illegitimate children. I thought she was actually married and everything, and she just had her her drug problem. But yeah, she know. had a big drug drug problem, and uh, yeah, a lot of these. Uh... She fucking recovered from that meth nicely. <laughs> oh yeah! Wow. Yeah. You know, I she didn't lose any teeth. She's lucky. You know. We, uh, you know, I, I'm not, I'm really familiar, not in this, don't get carried away. I'm not familiar in the sense that I shop here, but I'm really familiar with the meth capital of this country. Uh, I don't do my, I don't do my Christmas shopping here, but, uh, you know, and I, they don't look as good as her, you know, (laughs) at all. And, you know, maybe she, you know, maybe she did, but she's making enough on full house residuals to, to pay for new teeth. Obviously I think she got enough to pay for new tits. So, <laughs> I think they're national, man. Do you think think they're fake? I, I they kind of look fake. I don't know. Uh, I'd have I'd have to feel them. <laughs> uh, Let's which, give her a call, man. We can get her on. If you're listening. We should get her on. Yeah. What's her name? Uh, Jody Sweeten. Yeah. Jody Sweeten. Yeah. yeah. Listening, Jody Sweeten. Uh, yeah. Come on. I, over. I, yeah. I and if Jody, if you're listening. I still have a poster of you on my wall. I have the full house poster <laughs> in my bedroom. I do. So, uh, granted, you're like nine years old, so don't get creepy. <laughs> that's all they had. Uh oh. I couldn't find a later season where you were still illegal. So, wait, we shouldn't even go there. <laughs> uh, a later I'm season. Digging, I'm, I'm digging myself a hole here. You have to you print, are. Red Rocket, you'll just have to print out this picture that's on the Facebook page and, and make a poster of that. I'll, I'll 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 print it out and put it over her her child image on the poster. <laughs> yeah, but it's got this hilarious picture. They're all hugging. It's so it's so TGIF. And John Stamos is looking over with this big dorky smile, like he's about to make out with Joey. It they crack <laughs> up. And Danny's got his head tilted. He's got this giant schnoz, and he's smiling. We got to get Bob Saget on. You know, I think if Bob Bob Saget still tours, and he's the kind of guy that. We could probably make some contacts if he was coming to uh, either town and probably get an interview with him. You know, he seems real down to earth. Yeah, he he comes here every so often and, and plays at the uh, the local comedy club here. So yeah, so next time we ought to be all over that. I think he's somebody we could you know get we'll harass. Him. We'll harass him. And actually, uh, I think Bobby no. Lee's coming here. Uh, really, here our town? Yeah, for, uh, for when a, a show here in the next couple of months. So I'd love to, t- you know. Try to get into that show. Maybe talk to him too. Maybe see. it's the uh, hope. Maybe I should time if I visit. Maybe I should time it around. I would love to see Bobby Lee. Oh yeah, that'd be great, man. They're really good. They're really good. <laughs> yeah, kind of getting getting back to what Ryan I think was trying to say though. Um, I I don't know that I'd necessarily call these people hypocrites. Um, What's you know, acting? They're just doing. You know, it's they're doing an acting gig. You know, it's acting. They're, you know, they're their own people. Whatever they do outside of that show, I mean, they're people, you know. Um, they, just like, you know, all of us are, you know. I mean, I I went through my stages where I fucking did a bunch of bad shit, you know. But, and I mean, granted, I wasn't on a, a TV show or anything. I, I should have been because that would have been like the best show ever. But uh, <laughs> I'm, that was totally a joke. Uh, but, uh, but no, I mean, yeah, these shows that promote like, you know, all these family value type shows. I mean, I think it sucks for those people because I don't know. I mean, I'm sure they have to feel or they, they feel like they have to live up to this, 
fucking stupid image that's been created for them, you know? And uh, that's unfortunate, especially with, with, with younger kids. Uh, but I, I don't, I, I wouldn't go so far as to call them hypocrites because they're not the ones writing the show, you know? They're just fucking actors. Oh, I agree, well, man. Unless you're Bill Cosby and it's based around your whole livelihood and your whole. Well, Bill you know. Cosby's never, you know. I know he. Yeah, I, I like Bill Cosby. Don't get me wrong. I think he's a funny dude, but uh, I don't like how he gets real condescending on you know everybody else that he doesn't fucking agree with how they live their life and shit. Well, I I agree with you too, and you know I'm not this. Bill Cosby comes in my neck of the woods every single year, and you know what? If this was, well, he is a fucking hypocrite. Well, if this was Cosby Show, Eric Cosby coming to town, I would totally go see him because I love the Cosby Show. I really do, and I love Ghost Dad. Oh my gosh, I love oh, Ghost Dad. Well, wasn't he wasn't he a hypocrite? And uh, he was bitching at Lisa Bonet or whatever for doing um, Angel Heart. Angel Heart, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, he ragged on her big for that. And that, and she was she was fucking great in that movie. She was amazing. Yeah, and but, you uh, know. What I was getting to was, you know, I don't want to judge him too much because I, I'm not, I'm not going to act like I study him or nothing. But you know, ever since his son got killed, you know, God rest his soul, you know, any a lot of the interviews I see on TV, he's just kind of lost the laughter and he's so serious and he almost comes off really, you know, grudge holding and all, and you know, dare I say it, a little racist, you know, and it's just. Yeah. And what happened? And you know, I've seen clips of some of his stand up, and this is why I won't go see him because it's not comedy, it's more or less preaching. You know, right. it's like I'm not going to go and just go to a seminar to hear about, you know, the white cops that don't do their jobs. Like, I feel bad your son got killed or whatever happened, you know, but you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Oh, that was a terrible thing. Yeah. And I mean, I, I would be probably just as fucking jaded if if that happened to my son, you know, mm-hmm. but I mean, as a, I mean, I don't know. You just, you can't use that to, to go out and lash out at, you know, other people for the way that they live their life. You know, there was the, uh, back when the Osbournes was on, on TV, you know, he, he had the, oh, yeah. the comments, at, uh, the Osbournes, that's probably what you're talking about as well. Yeah. I remember, um, I remember when those came out as on the news and my my father, he was – I remember him saying this. You know, Bill – he's like, that guy is a joke. He's like, he's like, I think Ozzy Osbourne's a good dad. He was talking about all these reasons why Ozzy Osbourne's a good dad. Yeah. You know, and I could see his side of it. You know, he's real open-minded, but, you know, he's he's still – you know, it's like he watches out for his kids. And I think Bill Cosby – Wasn't it Bill Cosby was coming from – well, well, I think he was also coming from, look, his kid ended up on pills or whatever. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, and all this stuff. But you know what? My my father, what we were talking about was, you know what? Ozzy Osbourne lived a certain lifestyle. He didn't hide it from his kids, you know. It's like learn from my mistakes or whatever. And, you know, they did their thing. But, you know, there was always he, – he always expressed, at least on the TV show, that there was always a lesson to it, just like Bill Cosby. The same thing was there. You know what I'm saying? It was just a different right. environment. Yeah. And they got him healthy. They all got healthy. They got fixed. They went through their trial and error. And they made it through, you know, someone like Bill Cosby, if he tells me his family has no problems or no skeletons in the closet, then I'll show you a lying man, you know? Yeah. So I don't know. It just depends on how you look at it. My, my parents, they've, well, maybe I shouldn't say this on record, but basically I've grown up around certain things that weren't really kept in the closet, you know? And, you know, I, I know about it. If, if I was Bill Cosby's kid, you know, I'd, I don't know. I'd probably be out having a bunch of sex and smoking weed and doing God knows what else. You know. Oh, I don't yeah, know. I agree. You know, I I would be so curious. You know, but anyway. Yeah. But you know, if you're like me and you're like Jack Osborne, you grew up around it. You know, whatever it took, it kind of took it out of me. I'm like, you know what? I'm learning my my lessons vicariously here. You know. Yeah. So. Yeah. Hell yeah. Well, is that uh, is that a wrap on our questions or? Yeah, that's pretty. Uh, pretty much all we had, had. Yeah, I just had two of them this week. So, well, that's that's one more than we had on the last show. So, <laughs> there we go. Well, We're growing exponentially. We didn't even dip into Macaulay Culkin yet. Oh, what? What about? <laughs> can I dip I'm into just... Macaulay Culkin, please? <laughs> Were we supposed to? Well, no, I, I didn't. No, that didn't. That didn't really dip into this question, but. Uh... 
Yeah. No, I just threw his name out there. Sorry. <laughs> what I, didn't know. Talk- I, was, I was like, is there a Macaulay Culkin question that I didn't know about? Or? <laughs> I don't know. I wish, dude. I, I wish I wish we could talk to Macaulay, dude. See what he's been up to, man. He's, he's too busy about boning freaking Mila Kunis. Or they he's not dating. Up. Yeah, they're, they're not dating anymore, man. Or That's too been? bad. Too no. bad, dude. Well, I mean, for him... Cause it's funny because once her career takes off again, cause she's starting to have a resurgence, and it's like, oh, now I'm going to ditch this guy. I'm oh, ever, ever since, boy. ever since forgetting Sarah Marshall, dude, she's been fucking on a steady incline. Oh yeah, dude. yeah she's yeah. she's 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 growing, man. She's yeah. she's, yeah, she's, she's making she's... something grow. <laughs> 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 she's a beautiful girl, man. Totally. And there's been a lot of like fucking like just dick humor in this show hasn't there wow yeah that's all, that's right. all right yeah i was gonna throw in that that film noir favorite real quick oh okay. if uh if you guys don't mind i no i, I already i already kind of said something about it at the top of the show so <laughs> uh yeah there was one I, i'm not i won't i'm not gonna take like real long on it i just want to make a quick mention of this movie and and uh we'll just kind of go from there okay so, well, uh, give us your uh, yeah, give us your uh, film noir favorite there, Lush. Okay, well, the film noir favorite for this show, um, as I said, I'm a big sucker for these movies. You know, these 40s, 50s, black and white. A lot of them, you know, kind of crime drama type of thing. Um, my my film noir favorite for this show is called Sorry Wrong Number. Um, it's from 1948. Uh, stars Barbara Stanwyck and Burt Lancaster. Um, it was directed by Anatoly Litvak, and uh, it's just a really, really great movie. Uh, real suspenseful. I mean, for you know, people that watch it now might not find it as suspenseful, um, but I mean, it's a really great story. Basically, the uh, the premise of the movie is uh, uh, Barbara Stanwyck. She she plays a lady that's kind of sick and confined to her bed. And her husband is away, and uh, one night she's kind of waiting for her husband to uh, to come home, and she picks up the phone, and it was one of you know kind of back in the days when they had like those you know like uh, I forget what they were called maybe like party lines or whatever, I think is what we'll call them where you know different people would use like the same phone line so you could pick up the phone and hear somebody else's conversation, you know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, so she picks up the phone and she overhears a conversation between two men planning a murder. And uh, so then she starts, I mean, obviously, like I said, she's bedridden. And so she's trying to figure this thing out. I think at some point her husband gets mentioned in this thing. And so she's trying to figure all this out. Um, her husband, I mean, they, they go into some flashbacks. And uh, as she kind of hears these guys talking and stuff and, um, And her husband's into some kind of shady shit. And uh, so she ends up thinking that these people are planning her murder. And and so it's just, it's a really, I mean, intense concept. I mean, she's stuck in this bed and she thinks that people are coming to get her, you know. And uh, it's, I mean, if, if it was to be done, like, like if there was a remake of this movie, I think they could make it really you know, fucking intense and really crazy. Um, but I don't even know if I'd want to see a remake of it because I love the original version so much. Um, and yeah, I mean, pretty much, yeah, the whole movie, she's trying to figure out who the victim is so that she can try to prevent it. But, you know, she's stuck in this bed. So there's a lot of conflict there. I don't want to give a whole ton of stuff away. Um, but it's a really, really good movie. I, 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 I watched it for the first time, I mean, when I was pretty young, I think, maybe early teens, something like that, and I mean, from the first time that I watched it, I, I really, really enjoyed it, so um, it's a great movie, it still hasn't gotten old, in my opinion, um, it still kind of has that effect, and I mean, it's just a beautiful old black and white, you know, uh, flick, and it's uh, it's really great. I, I really enjoy it. So if you're into those kind of movies, um, check it out. If not, 
um, check it out anyway, because maybe this will be the movie that gets you into those kind of movies. You never fucking know. So give it a shot. And uh, where you know, did you see this movie? At? Was this a Netflix movie or? Uh, no, I like I said, I saw it. I think the first time when I was maybe third. I don't know, early teens, I think, if that. Yeah, sure. And um, I don't remember if it was, if my, maybe my grandparents had a copy of it or something like that, or if it was on, like, uh, AMC or, you know, um, something like that back in the day. Um, and I just happened to watch it, you know. Uh, and, I yeah, I just it, it's one of those movies that always just kind of stuck with me, you know. Um mm-hmm. It's really, really performance driven. I mean, you know, Barbara Stanwyck did a lot of great things being stuck in a bed. I mean, <laughs> you know, how much you'd think, you know, how much can you do if you're just stuck in a bed? But she brings a lot of intensity to it. Um, did a, She did a great job. Uh, so, yeah, I mean, it, it's like I said, one that always kind of stuck with me. And um, still, I think I think it still holds up, man. I really do. Like I said, for, you know, and I've seen a lot of fucked up shit. And, uh, but I think this one still holds up as, as a great, you know, suspenseful old movie. So I, I highly recommend it. Check it out. It's a great movie. And, um, yeah, I'll pop in, you know, kind of here and there with, uh, with some more of these, you know, let me know if you, you know, if anybody enjoys it, if you, if you watch it, if you like it, let me know if you don't like it. Tell me to fucking keep the film noir shit to myself or whatever, you know. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, give give it a chance if uh, if you're into that kind of thing. It's you know if you're into Hitchcock or you know um, now Hitchcock didn't do this one, but if you're into that kind of stuff, it's uh, definitely worth checking out. So that uh, I'll kind of just leave it at that. Go find that movie. <laughs> Sounds like, good to me, man. I'll have to. Yeah, I'll have to find that and uh, yeah, give I'll that have, a watch. Yeah, I don't, I don't know if it's. Uh, I know I'm pretty sure it's not streaming on Netflix, but I think you can get it on uh, through the mail. <laughs> oh, okay. So check. Riverman, me. you'll watch anything that doesn't have Tony Todd. You're cool with it. Your book. I like Tony Todd. Well, I like Tony oh. Todd. Night ninety. That's a. <laughs> little, little inside not joke. A, not, not a not a Candyman fan, but. I like Candyman. I just always, I just always go back to movies and I think about Tony Todd because you think he's always like in the worst, just the worst he's, things. He's, he's like not in the I worst, think the worst, I guess. But well, I I but I, I I always think it's funny and I always go back to like your quote of, um, you know, if it's got Tony Todd in it, basically it's got to be bad because he'll do anything. I don't know. It's funny. I, I like Ken, Tony Todd. Ken Forty Eight does some pretty bad shit too. <laughs> What was that movie hey. we watched? Uh, Lush was that uh, Devil's Den with uh, Devin Sawa. Oh, you know, did, I, I didn't we actually end up liking that one though. <laughs> that movie sucked, dude. <laughs> I think that I think that was a vampire movie or something. Yeah, yeah, I sucked. thought we ended up liking that one. No, I, I I think I got that from a dollar from like a close at Hollywood Video, dude. Yeah, yeah, that, that movie sucked balls, dude. I thought, God, I was. Thinking that that was the one that we we had really low expectations of, but then ended up watching it and it was actually kind of cool. I don't no, know. That, maybe I'm gonna... that, that that movie makes you want to fuck your sister, dude. It's that bad. <laughs> Nothing makes you want to. Do... What in the world? <laughs> yeah, where'd you come up with that? One? I don't know I don't where you know, came dude. up with that. See, you know, River, you never had a sister, so you can make jokes like that. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, damaged goods, lady. I'm sorry. Oh. You were damaged goods. <laughs> That's great. Shamuta! Well, Stupid the, incompetent uh, bitch. On the let's get your sister note, should we take a break and then come back and close the show? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> All right. All right, geeks, we're, you're listening to Behind the Mask with the River Man. And the Lush... And the Red Rocket. Lucky you. Stay tuned. (laughs) If you've ever considered stepping behind the beaded curtain at a sleazy video store, if you've ever watched something so vile that you had to lock the door behind you, if you currently have a VCR still connected to your home theater, 
Then get yourself over to Exploited Cinema at exploitedcinema.blogspot.com. Bat32 and J Dog always keep it greasy. And remember to keep telling yourself it's only a podcast. 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 <laughs> welcome, welcome back, guys. You're uh, you're hanging with uh, behind the mask. Hello, and Mister Cooper. <laughs> Whatever happened to that show, dude? Hang uh, with Mr. Cooper. He died with TGIF, man. Dude, I used to love that show. Had uh, Omar Gooding in it, man. Omar Gooding did. Wasn't wasn't he in uh, Wild and Crazy Kids, dude? Omar. Yeah, wow, with uh, dude. Yeah, with uh. Crud, man. Jeff, uh, what's his name? What was the other one's name? He he was in the original Night of the Demons as the main character's little brother. Oh fuck! What the Jeff. fuck is his name? Oh, Donnie Donnie Jeffcoat. Oh okay. Yeah, Donnie Jeffcoat. He he was the little brother on Night of the Demons, and it was like a year before he started that show. Uh, I just saw. Uh, something on Facebook the other day that uh, Team Nick is going to yeah. start rerunning uh, 90s Nickelodeon shows. Oh, you're, you're kidding me, man. That's Where cool. I actually have that channel. That's Did they awesome, say which man. ones? Are we talking about Nicktoons, like Doug? Or just no. like Clarissa? Well, yeah, I think, I mean, I don't know if they're going to do, like, cartoons and live-action shows, but they said they're going to be, you know, starting to show... All the old '90s stuff, starting in July. Oh man, oh, what about sweet, Is that dude. the Roundhouse? What about Roundhouse? So I, I know, like, uh, well, Keenan Keenan Thompson did uh, from he was in all that, you know. Yeah, and yeah. Did, uh, he did, did like a promo commercial for it, and uh, and it said, yeah, uh, something like the '90s were all that coming in July or something like that. Hey, six degrees of Kevin Bacon. Keenan and Kel also starred Ken Fourier as their dad. That's right. <laughs> Kevin Bacon. That's true, it did. Right. I wonder if Danny from Hey Dude's going to be there, dude. Oh my gosh, dude. They need to put Hey Dude on there. And they need to put... Uh, Slew Your Shorts. Uh, Slew Your Shorts. Danny hey, Cooks. Danny Cooks, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I love it. I, you see, when I watch Slew Your Shorts, it's like a time capsule for me. Because it was only oh, on yeah, for two dude. seasons, and it was on in like 1991 and 92 or 90, 91. So it's a time capsule. There's just tons of references to everything that was big that couple of years. Like so many Guns N' Roses references. So many Megan Metallica references. Metallica did. Yeah, I mean, whatever was huge, like just, I, I love it. It's like a blast from the past. Oh my, George Michael, Dino was like upset, you know, like, I mean, just yeah. all this stuff that, <laughs> yeah. it, it cracks me up. Like, oh, I remember the episode where, uh, they turned Ugg's tongue blue, and then oh, he, yeah. nobody could answer the question, what was George Michael's real name? Of course, Dina knew, and um, then Ugg accepted the money. Like, some 13- or 12-year-old girl would know what George Michael's real name was nowadays. That's total 1990, but oh, yeah. it's, it's a great, great show. What what about the episode where, like, uh, don't they, like, get a bunch of money together to get burgers or something or whatever? Yeah, and they, they had, like they, donkey lips and sponge or whatever, like in the wheelbarrow, all that change and shit, dude. Yeah, <laughs> sneaking out. Yeah, I love that episode, dude. And then all the change like fell out of their pockets and shit, and they're freaking out. Then Ugg ended up uh, going up to the the girl. He was finding her stand. He's he like, was I'll, finding. I'll take, yeah. I'll, he's like, I'll take uh, a burger and your phone number. <laughs> your phone number. <laughs> I think he did that at the movie theater episode too, where they were sneaking out to the movies. But uh, yeah, he was following the the dropped quarters, like uh, you know, yeah. like Hansel, or, uh, Hansel and Gretel. Hansel, yeah, Hansel and Gretel. Yeah, the fucking breadcrumbs and shit. But yeah, I I really want to see Hey Dude though, because I think I haven't seen that in even longer. You know, I just want to sing. I just want to sing the theme song. And uh, yeah. yeah, it's good to get Red Rocket on the show and actually talk to him a little bit. Absolutely. I, I want to do this kind of, you know, I like this format. You know, it's a little isolating having to do a segment by myself, and I like talking. You know, I'd like to bring, even if it's sticking to a similar format, you know, we talk about the music. I don't want to ditch that, but I'd like to talk about it with you guys. It's it's a lot of fun. There's more uh, random element there, and 
I have fun doing it like this. You know, I don't, I don't know about you guys, but you know, if anybody has any comments about any of the things we've touched on, which it's been a many and a plenty, mm-hmm. um, feel free to comment, you know, if you think we're full of crap or, you know, if we think we're out of line or if you just think we're stupid and need to shut up, you know, we want to hear about it. Um, or if we happen to have touched on some childhood memory with all the nostalgia we've touched on, you know, feel yeah. free to start a thread on that. We could talk about, we could talk about anything we touched on for 10 seconds for about 10 hours. I guarantee it. So, I could talk about the friggin' cliche of there being an Indian cowboy on a Nickelodeon show. That's funny. All yeah. night long. <laughs> all night long. But, uh, yeah. So hit us up. For sure. Do that. Uh, and yeah, I think, Maybe coming up uh, on the next uh, next show, we might uh, maybe get a roundtable going, possibly with uh, our friends Dave and Chris from uh, Horror Happy Hour. Um, you know, we might maybe pick out a movie uh, to uh, just kind of sit around and discuss. And I'm sure it'll uh, kind of go the same way as this show went at, at some point. You know, we'll, we'll get into all kinds of other areas, but... Um, you know, we're going to try to get that maybe set up for, uh, for the next show and, uh, and talk to them some too, cause they are great people. And, uh, if, if you've ever seen any of their reviews, uh, through their website, horrorhappyhour.com or, um, or just on YouTube, um, they're, uh, really, really entertaining people. So, um, you, I think anybody that listens to our show will really enjoy, um, us having them on so <laughs> oh yeah those guys know their shit yes Let's they do that. yes they do very nice uh, guys yeah very very good people big supporters of us thank you again to them for for they've, everything they've been nothing but complimentary they've been they've said nothing but good things and been supportive too yes very much so so um you know look forward to that maybe for next show we're going to try to get that put together uh anything else uh you guys were wanting to do on the next show I don't know. I was kind of hoping to talk to Jody Sweet Sweetlin or whatever the fuck her name Sweetin, is. Sweetin, man. Sweetin. We're never going to get her on the show with that kind of sweet talk. <laughs> Jody, Jody Sweet Tits? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 wow. Oh, man. You need to go to your bedroom now, Lush. Yeah. There's some, there's some, there's some drinks happening. All right. <laughs> We're going to do a whole show. <laughs> we already talked about the lactating uh, segment, so. Uh... <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, uh, yeah. So, yeah, there. I don't know. Who knows what the fuck will be on the next show, man? It, it might just all be a big fucking surprise. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> I like that. I kind of like these random shows. It's kind of yeah. Yeah. Every once in a while, you know, it kind of mixes everything up. So. But yeah, maybe we'll. You know, maybe next show we'll get get back into, uh, you know, maybe we'll do another in-depth review of the movie, maybe with the guys from Horror Happy Hour. Or, I don't know. We'll see what happens. Exactly. Well, take but, it uh, as it comes, man. Take it as it comes. But yeah, guys, thanks for listening. And, uh, yeah, we'll we'll get back to you here in the next couple of weeks. And uh, you're listening to Behind the Mask with the River Man. And the Lush. And the Red Rocket. <laughs>